Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Monaco, to the World Championships. And you can see sitting next to me, you did see sitting next to me, my good friend Thomas Tenlin. Well, they started the match before we could even do an introduction. Uh, Thomas from Sweden, number nine giant. He's going to do the uh, heavy lifting and the, the intelligent part of this uh, uh, discussion. Uh, somebody asked, uh, are they playing legal moves? All matches that are streamed, and I didn't know this that are going to be legal moves because of the transcription. Uh, when there's a break, I'm going to tell you about what's the format, what's going on. Let me just say that we have Frank Frigo on top and the white checkers from San Diego, Victor Ashkenazi from uh, New Jersey, New York, and uh, also from Greece, two Americans. So we're going to have an American in the finals, not necessarily an American champion. Uh, the winner of this match gets a day off tomorrow and will play in the finals uh, on Sunday at uh, 3 p.m. or 1500, I think they call it, uh, Monte Carlo time. The loser will have to win three more matches to get back from the fighter's bracket or the second chance to get back and have a chance at the finals. Uh, some of you who are very, very callous and all you think about is money, there's about $55,000 difference riding on this match. The, uh, almost as much money as we'll be riding on the finals. When you take the bonus that the undefeated player gets and the guarantee of coming in first or second, and the other player's got to fight his way through three matches, and then the side pool, this, they're actually playing for about $55,000 now. Uh, every time I play for $55,000, I get a little nervous. Uh, and uh, Thomas, your thoughts? Yeah, I'd be nervous about that, too. <laughs> Thomas is the number nine giant. He uh, is a grandmaster, uh, and I'm just so thrilled to have him here. He's an old, good friend of mine, and I have to admit that I'm, I have a conflict of interest in this finals because I love both Frank and Victor. They're both really good friends of mine for many, many years. Frank and I have done some, kind of, some business together when he had Zeus. Uh, Victor and I play often when I go to New York in the park. We play. I'm not going to play him regular backgammon. We play Pasco Gammon, and he still finds a way to kill me. And uh, we go to dinner every time we get a chance. We play a one-point match for the dinner, and I think I won one. Uh, even one-point matches, he's impossible. Victor, as we know, is one of the top three, four players in the world. Okay. Frank grabs that cube. Looks like a great cube. Uh, easy take, though. With those two checkers back... Uh, well, uh, XG back. disagrees, I think. I think XG thought that this was... Uh medium-sized pass basically oh but, really yeah. see oh my god and look at frank's pr as a result i didn't look at xg open mouth insert foot okay from now on i'm gonna look, not let somebody knows what they're talking about take the lead that looked like a take to me uh, yeah it, it was uh, i think it was a pass by 120 or something which is obviously not a really big pass in uh -huh. any way so i mean always difficult in cube action to be that precise i would say Anyth well, anything close to a hundred uh i would say it's not a very big mistake as i see it at least in in, in, in uh victor's last match we saw him pass a point two pass and he knew damn well it was a take but he was playing the player and playing the situation looking for gammons when i interviewed him last night if you missed that interview i recommend you go back and look at the interview with victor it was sensational he gave gave us insights about what it's like to be playing under huge pressure at the top of the game and what and how he thinks about xg he doesn't give a damn about xg he wants to win he wants the world championship he doesn't give a damn about the money all he cares about he wants this title frank has been there before frank won the world championship in 1994 and uh, we asked him about it. He said, it's a blur. He was on his honeymoon. They decided to stop off in uh, Monte Carlo for the fun of it, play in the tournament, and he wins <laughs> the world championship. <laughs> yeah. So let's see if he can do it again. Oh, well, we had 12 world champions enter this tournament, and I think only four were left after the first round. I was, I was thinking about putting a bet on with some odds on the chance of a world champion repeating, and it really didn't look good until now. Now we have a reasonable chance that it'll repeat. But Frank would have to win two more matches in a row. He'd have to win this match and then the final match to, to repeat. So what is that? That's 50% if he wins. But if he loses, he can still win by winning three more matches on the way back. Right. So Victor trying to decide whether to leave his anchor or not here. Usually some resistance towards leaving uh, 
an advanced anchor, especially when you're priming your opponent and, yeah. you, and you can just sit back there and wait is often the feeling. But I, I guess here he can come out, duplicate or actually triplicate deuces and also his 6-1 plays poorly otherwise. So, uh -huh. so that's apparently the best play. Or oh. I guess it was the best play. Yeah. I, I'm not sure I saw it. Well, we know that Frank's board is not going to get worse. It's only going to get better. So that, that screams at running. Yeah, and look at what happened now. He gets hit, but is he that uh, unsatisfied with this situation? I don't think so. So 20 numbers so, hit back immediately, and that's, yeah. that's big for Gammons and wins. Right. So surely uh, it was a good play. They don't play, play dice on run. checkers. Nope. I will watch the chat from time to time. So if you... Uh, have questions or comments? I might not catch them right away, but I'll do my best. By the way, tomorrow, whoever wins this has a day off, but there will be three stream matches in the fighters bracket uh, at 1,400, 1,700, and 2,200. And we've got some tremendous players in the fighters bracket. First of all, one of these will be Martin Holm has already uh, advanced uh, to a higher level in the fighters bracket. Uh, and by the way, on stream two, we have a fighters bracket match if you want to uh, if you're interested in that, Dagfin Snarheim from Norway, an incredible player, and Mario Kohl from Germany. That I mean, that's an amazing match. I, I wish I could watch that, and I probably, uh, by the way, I will after the, all these matches are recorded. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everybody watching, please smash the like button. We want to get over a, a thousand uh, live active viewers and subscribe. Okay. Okay, so we said it was not too dangerous for Victor to get hit, but all of a sudden that uh, <laughs> changed a little bit. So now he would be very happy to enter here, obviously, although uh, Frank is still hard-pressed to roll a five, I guess. Yeah, fives are important numbers here for both players. True. Victor needs fives in and Frank needs fives out. And it's the battle of the fives. Yeah, and he can he the kind great of rolls split. a five here. Now, yeah. That was incredible. That's a big, big roll. Now he doesn't just need fives; he needs fives and fours, doubling his chances of getting out of there. Well, he has a four already, so he can uh, come out to the eighteen point, right? Well, he didn't have a four if he didn't split just now. No, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking <laughs> but I, about. I just mean he yeah. has rolled a four. Oh, so he has the chance to yes, right now. Oh, now yes, right. Come out. Now's the time to yeah. do it. Yep. Yeah. You have to prioritize what's the most important thing going on. I learned that from Matt Cohn Geyer. When Matt was uh, when I interviewed Matt, I said, "Is it your intellect? Is it your math skills? Uh, or is it your memory?" He said, "Neither. It's the ability to focus on the key issue." That was made him a great chess player and backgammon player. The key issue there for Frank was getting out, and he did. The key issue for Victor was coming in, and he didn't. That's why this is a big pass. Yep. Um I think the 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 loose blot on uh, uh, on Victor's uh, fourteen point is is key here. If he didn't have that extra blot, it would be quite some work to do still for Frank. But now, um, as we can see, at least based on the <laughs> XG analysis, yeah. is is way too uh, it's way too much the risk of uh, Frank both coming out and. Otherwise, perhaps hitting and buying some extra time. So if yeah. he didn't have that loose dot blot, it might not even be a double. I'm not sure it's a double. It was certainly. I think it would mm, be a take. But, right. Right. But, uh, I I agree. It, it should it should be takeable. Otherwise, uh -huh. what um, Thomas is doing is uh, eyeballing, shifting the position, and looking at variations because it really helps you understand the game better. Why it's a double? Why it's a take? Why you move one checker play? You don't just look at the position that you're looking at. Quite often, we take a picture, put it in, and do like six variations to see how it would change the position. But when you do that, you'll really understand what's going on. It takes a lot of patience. It's called deliberate practice. I know of no better way to get better. Was that your approach to getting better? Well, you're one yeah, of the best players yeah, in the world. Certainly, one of one of the things you can do is look at variance, and, and one of the things I do, yeah. Um, uh, in general, trying to understand where I uh, was wrong in my thinking whenever I made mistakes. So you can do it look them, looking at variance. You can look at the dice distribution, how the different roles play, uh -huh. uh, etc. You can also play games out, which I haven't done a lot, but that's uh, another method. Uh, that was that the, on, that was the only do. method we had when I was learning this game. We didn't have 
XG. And when he talked about dice distribution, he's talking about a feature in Extreme Gammon. If you are a serious player, go to www.extremegammon.com, buy it, tell everybody there's a drop down screen, tell them you heard about it from Phil. I make $5 when you do that. Then let me know and I can get you a video that tells you how to use it, every detail of it, because there's no FAQ on that. But if you really want to get good, every single player here, I would bet you, has Extreme Gammon. Uh, that that that's any good at all. It's the only way to advance in this game. Okay, he passes. Very good pass. Yeah, yeah. It lo that's a big tough, turnaround. Tough, tough cube to pass still, mm -hmm. in the sense that he is winning so many percent of the games. I mean, if if that position is just played out, so you really you don't want to give it up. But he's it's just getting gammed every time he doesn't win, almost or not every time, but like uh -huh. two times out of three or something like that. So a gammon, of well, course, yeah. is a double game where your opponent gets all of his checkers off before you get one off, and you get twice as much, uh, twice as many points as whatever the cube says. And then there's a backgammon. If you get all your checkers off before they get a checker off, that's worth triple. So that's a that's a real factor in games like that. It's a very good roll. Helps the race come down. Very good, yes. And uh, let's see if... Victor can respond, otherwise Frank is already pretty close to a double, but yeah, that's a pretty solid roll, mm -hmm. so definitely not a cube just yet. Well, I don't know. It was a decent roll, no more. Um, do you make the ace or do you come down? I don't know the answer. Um, I'm tempted to make the ace because of the stack. Both plays make some sort of sense because, because I mean... Uh, Frank wants to bring it home, and then he wants to create flexibility. But it, but he he also likes that Victor has to advance his his block from from the um, from the twenty four point. I mean, the fact that he anchors on the twenty one point is fine in a way for Frank because he can dump checkers behind it. So, uh huh. And it was right to make the ace point by quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I guess there were two pretty tall stacks on, on the... Yeah, uh, unstacking, duplication, uh, those are two major things I think about uh, all the time when I'm playing, and it's just been drummed into me by my teachers over the years. I've had some good teachers. Bill Roberti, Paul McGrill, Perry Gartner, Kit Woolsey, Oswald Jacoby. I got a lot of money invested in good teachers, and it's really paid off. I'm a mediocre player now. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, he's volunteering partially yeah. because the other the other guy's board is not so hot. Yeah, and also he, he his role didn't play very well otherwise. Well, although, but although it was a it, bad play. <laughs> yeah, it was possible to create some future flexibility. I, I that is the problem. He uh, he still would have left a shot, but now he has problems next roll as well. Uh, uh -huh. Volunteering by bringing two down would have left some more flexibility for the future well i have an axiom once you've made your opponent's 18 point the midpoint has much less value yeah you yeah, shouldn't be point. trying to you shouldn't yeah. be trying to hold it exactly so if he would have cleared it there he would have had some some time to play to yep. his checker stand he's going to be punished by getting hit Ob obviously very easy to say given that Ooh. xg has told us it's a best right. play but that's that's the rationale for the move wow i was tempted to come up to to the 20 point and it's uh where is that? It's not, you know, it's terrible. You need to use those aces elsewhere. You need to be playing on the other side of the board. You're yeah. pretty, you're just about as good to be on the four as the five point as the five point. Yeah, because actually it's quite uncomfortable for Frank that uh, there's a gap on his five point now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, if if uh, Victor advanced his anchor, it would in a way just feel easier for, for Frank to play, you know, yeah. the checker. For instance, one pip behind that angle. But I would have played six to four if I wasn't advancing instead of just bringing those closer. I didn't. I didn't see the great yeah, value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was right, by the way. I would have played six to four. Yeah. So that means that I'm better than Victor, right? It definitely does. Yes. <laughs> well, the amount of money I've lost to him proves that that's wrong. <laughs> Victor's before coming to this tournament, we were talking. His record this year is winning about 73% of his matches. That's just unbelievable in a game that has this much luck. And he's playing very good players almost everywhere he goes. That's including super jackpots. I, I, I'm sure somebody may have had a better record than that at some point, but not not as long. I mean, it's just amazing. He's really hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he sure is winning 
a lot. Feels like he wins every tournament when you look at he's either you read on Facebook. He's either winning every tournament or he's in the finals of the super <laughs> jackpot or both. He seems to be coming up against Chris Trencher a lot and, and they seem to be splitting. This is one of the reasons why I uh, and Chris Trencher went very far in this tournament and played very well as well. Uh, it justified my posting that I thought Chris should be on the Giants list as well. Of course, I always vote for Thomas Tenlins since I've known you. I hope so, Phil. I sure hope <laughs> you so. You deserve it. Um, and so, you said you would vote for me twice. In yeah, return. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I always say it. <laughs> yeah, but 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 uh, okay. So um, so Frank played behind with with a three one. He didn't want to leave a shot since since uh, something had to give uh -huh. anyway for for Victor. And sure enough, he had to leave leave the anchor. So in a way, his safe play. Um, yeah, ended up making a lot of sense there. Well, he's up in the um, race. What's your game plan? Race. And you don't want to risk shots when Victor has a pretty good board. You don't want to get hit. So Exactly. Again, exactly. it's all about game plan, and strategy. That, now now that uh, Victor's back checkers ha have moved a bit forward, it seems a little easier for... Uh, for Frank to get his guys home. Yeah, he For can example, just go now, behind. Yeah. He, he can le leave. No, it, oh, okay. Yeah, that's that, that's clear. <laughs> yeah, that's clear. I do yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. I'm used to a baffle box yeah, where both yeah, players are, yeah. are rolling on that side. Yeah. I think everybody should use one of my baffle boxes, by the way. Anyway, it's the case now as well. Because uh, with a 4 3 here, he can come around the corner uh, and just leave a single shot, and that's probably going to be all he leaves. Or it, it, he can just play it completely safely and wreck his board. But in these sort of games with contact left, I mean, it's it looks safe to to uh, break your board. But the problem is you allow your opponent to take a lot of quote unquote risks to hit you later. Yeah, so he they, can slot in front so, of him, leave yeah, lots in front of him, do right, all kinds of stuff. So your opponent can just yeah. play carelessly, and then the risk is that you'll get hit later. Yep. So that's why it's not as safe as it looks. Um, that being said, you don't really want to leave a shot against a strong four-point board, so it's very understandable that you're looking to do something else if possible. Uh, but This is clearly see, the right yeah, play. Yeah, if, he got it. He finds it as well. And There's no yeah. harm in looking at the other. No, no, no. Quite the opposite. It's a very good idea. This is uh, not exactly at all what Victor wanted. He's got some real choices here. Again, yeah. his game plan, he'd rather play, he'd rather keep contact and get a shot. That's his best chance. So you leave that back checker back. Yeah. Interesting that uh, it seems to be such... Oh, okay, maybe not a, a big mistake, but to, to play to play to the uh, 12 point. But uh, yeah, it's probably, as you say, conceptually, you want to stay back. And, and in case uh, Frank has to wants to run off his... Uh, uh, 18 point for whatever reason then but, he well, has to worry about that yeah, lot so yeah. he yeah. can't run off the 18 point now without leaving double shots so it's just too rich to oh to yeah with this roll but i mean if he yeah. rolled like double aces or double deuces or something right. then he would have had to think about cleaning up the block yeah and not just advancing the anchor so this is yeah. the only play <clears throat> <clears throat> this is a nice roll he's just going to make the ace point yep I, I, and I, I, then what you're supposed Slotting to slot very yeah. natural of yep. course but he it probably anticipates that he might get a shot so the slotting was right a lot because of that yeah <clears throat> board be gone yep victor would like to roll kind of small here he'd like he'd love to roll a three he wants to stay in front of him. Hey, double threes. One, yeah, two. and he, probably mm. he, he he maybe he should just cover instead of uh, cleaning up the. Yeah, <laughs> just because if he gets hit now, so what? He and very he, quickly he, found the right play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if if uh, Frank rolls a six, yeah, or a five four for that matter, shots are deadly. <laughs> so. This should be a double, I suppose. This is 20 shots and 16 misses. If he hits, he wins. If he misses, he loses. <laughs> this is like a one-roll position. And well, he doesn't lose is a if he misses. He doesn't lose if he misses because Frank wastes a lot of pips. So he's not up by near as much in the race as it looks, right? 
I think he loses if he misses. Unless he rolls big, he's going to get doubled out. Am I wrong with the 20 pips, even with the wastage? Maybe I maybe I misread it, but I think he's going to lose most of the time. He's not going to lose if he rolls double six, double five, double four, maybe double three. But if he just misses with normal numbers, it's a clear yeah. double, though. See, we'll this see is, if it happens. Yeah, <laughs> this game is probably going to end on one roll. And if you're a 20 to 16 favorite, uh, you would rather play for twice as much. Now, of course, that's not true. It's certain scores, and that's what makes match play so much more fun and interesting than uh, in individual game play or money play. Victor did think about one-tenth of a second before he doubled. This is just such a known position for him. Yeah, and it's, it's very clear. Generally, in backgammon, when you can win a game with a single roll and you're more than 50% to do so... Yeah, you're going to uh -huh. ship it. Yeah. And your point to that, not necessarily winning when you miss is what makes this a pass. It isn't. If he didn't, if he had a better pip count right, and right. less wasted, it would be a take. Yeah. That, Very good pass by Frank. True. That and the fact that uh, Victor could also win a gammon. Yeah. Ah. So, yeah. So, there's a whole bunch of reasons that was a pass. Yeah. But clear double. That being said, good pass by Frank. Yes. It's not easy to pass. <laughs> Just because you leave 20 shots when you're up 20 pips in the race. So, strong pass by Frank, even though it was... Well, you pointed out all the wastage speed. on the ace. Every checker on the ace over one is counts as two pips. So, right. he really wasn't up that much. True. If he was clearly up in the race, and he would absolutely win if he was missed, it would be a big take. Definitely. Anchor. Yep. That's called the golden point. It's worth gold. Who named it the Golden Point? That's before your time and mine. Perhaps Paul McGrill? Or it's at least in his book. But, uh, uh -huh. yeah, I don't know. Well, if you're not sure, it's usually pretty good to attribute Paul McGrill. <laughs> right, right. <It's laughs> you, good. You, can't go, you can't go too wrong by saying, I right. think Paul McGrill right. came up with right. that. Right, right. Because most, most of the really great concepts he did come up with. Roberti's responsible for a few, and Woolsey's done, had his share, too, in the old days. And now in the new days, we've got Michi, we've got Mark Olson and Mochi's new book, which I highly recommend. Go to the Backgammon Galaxy store. Michi's book, I, I misspoke and said it was out yet because I, I misunderstood Michi. I thought it was out. It'll be out soon on five-point match play and cubing. Yeah, and now, I mean, Victor is, he must be close to a double already. Um, unless, of course, uh, Frank can deliver somehow. Um, he's like a, I mean, he's like he, a five, not, not a five six though. Yeah, uh, probably he can ship it. I think because, um, yeah, <laughs> he he's in, This is relatively simple position, but I mean he is uh, he has a strong board. He's losing the race by four pips. Well, yeah, but he's got a checker that's relatively awkwardly placed behind a really. Uh, dangerous structure and uh, at the same time he's really controlling uh, frank's uh, offensive side of the board mm -hmm. so yeah he took it's a very good double and a very good take yeah yeah i'm going to be tired of saying that because these guys are going to get most of them right <laughs> yeah definitely strong players both of them so should you hit i guess is the question hit is um, right by by uh only 0 0.017 or 021 it's really yeah. close yeah it's a it's a question of whether you want to go all in to create your prime or you want uh oh big roll big big roll for yeah. frank yeah comes yeah. in hits and covers that's big those are the kind of swings we uh, will see a lot of people say they're jokers but jokers happen all the time big rolls happen all the time that's part of the game that's why it's so much fun yeah um anyway point of victor's hit there a little bit that that he dis doesn't give frank many numbers that Im escape immediately and we can see that now as well even though frank hit him right back he's still stuck on the 23 yeah. point yeah he needs a three six to really escape <laughs> yeah it's that much yeah <laughs> one reason you always think about hitting is if you have more interboard points than your opponent and at the time uh, Victor had three interboard points and Thomas had two, but not only that, Victor's got the rack, the four, five, six point, and Thomas has uh, Swiss cheese. True. And the anchor, having an anchor on the golden point 
helps you not worry about coming in and getting blitzed. That's right. And he's going to continue because of the blot. Yeah, and when yeah, and also when you face a single back checker uh, that's at the edge of your priming structure, you really want to hit it so it doesn't escape. So there's yeah. this thing that I often use: uh, hit a blot, prime a pair. There's two checkers back. Mm -hmm. You can play a priming game. There's one back. You probably should be hitting to stop him from escaping, depending on the setup, of course. Yep. The four is in, and he did it. Very good. You don't want to put a blot out there, give him a chance to hit you, and then escape. Exactly. Too strong of a board. Frank's board now to leave any shots voluntarily. Yeah. Um, this play is right. Victor would love to have a 5-3. 4-2 is a beautiful roll also. It really is. And Thomas is very stiff. Very stiff, but he'd still like to have a six to come out. Yeah, you mean Frank, I suppose. Frank, I, I mean, <laughs> Frank, you're, uh, you're, you're I'm not stiff. Oh, that's right. You're not playing either. <laughs> um, well, I get all you giants uh, mixed up. Right, and now Victor could leave a shot uh, coming. Uh, okay, at this, he didn't. He w didn't roll the number to do it here, but he would have come up out into the outfield, leaving a shot if if he had to from from well, the anchor. Because well, why did the he leave the shot there instead of the outfield? I think we're well, seeing well, the answer right a, now. He rolled a two-one, so there was oh, no other upper oh, right. unless he. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I thought he. Yeah. Otherwise, he would have gone yeah. from the anchor. The beauty of this also is now, yeah. If 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 he only it was only a single shot. Frank would be tempted to just run, but with a double shot, the odds of getting hit if he comes out are, are pretty big. Yeah. And, um, well, About two the thirds advantage of, the of coming out is obviously if you get missed, you're in great shape. Yeah. And the disadvantage, if you get hit, you're in terrible shape. And if you don't come uh, out now, when are you going to do it? It's right to come out. Too. Right. That, that's, that's probably the reason that you have to come out is that even if you don't, it's not like you're in good yeah. shape. There's only 21 um, shots if you come out. All fours, uh, ones, and double two. Yeah. So that means, yeah, right. that means there's 15 numbers. Uh, it's, it's, that yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Right. And you're in good shape when he rolls those. Um, you're in horrible shape if he hits you, but again, you have to weigh it against the alternative. If you don't come out now, it's going to get worse. And Victor might come in and hit him off the ace, which makes it really tough for him, too. Yeah, and you might not hit, roll a number to come out. Right? That's right. I mean, so well, this play is wrong, but it wasn't terrible. No, 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 not at all. I mean, for two very different game plans, they were relatively close plays. Um, um, and here you can come off the anchor, taking some risk, perhaps. Uh, just, oh, yeah, and that's yeah, the yeah, right yeah. Play. And that's another way to take risk, big which is play. of course better. Wow, because it has a uh, much better upside. Oh, but, if he yeah. doesn't get hit, a yeah. three or a six would be great for Victor next time. But oh, he does hit and yeah, covers. And covers amazing oh, wow. roll. That's, of course. that's a joker. Yeah, but otherwise very good find because because leaving the shot elsewhere would have given good sixes and hitting numbers. Yeah. Now it was just a six. But he rolled a six, so... Now, yeah. does Victor wish he hadn't made that play? Hell no. He's happy he made the right play. Yeah, but now That's it's how you have to play, play on, I suppose. This is... Yeah, it must be a play sure, on, you right? Get a, you get a three, you I get mean, a he can, we can, he can win a game, and of course, of course, Victor can come in, and then he, he can uh, perhaps have a take, but still... Don't you play on here up 55 pips? Yes, yeah. by a lot. And what you pointed out is if he has a take after after coming in, that's a market gainer. There aren't yeah. that many of those. He no. has to roll a five something. He has. I mean, first Frank has to roll a non-hitter and a non-clearing doublet, and then Victor has to enter. Ah. Then I suppose he can. Good take. decision by Frank. He's yeah. too good, and he got his three. He got rewarded. Yep. I know that the score is only one to two in a match to 19, but swings like this that are four and six point swings, I don't care when they happen in the match, they're big. <laughs> These players aren't thinking this is trivial at all. This is huge. Of course. Of course. I mean, even this early in a match, every point you win is worth, say, 
three or four percent match winning chances so <laughs> the swing of uh, uh -huh. swing of four points is and, still and, a lot so so yeah. and, and let's see if there's fifty five thousand dollars difference at stake in this match <laughs> yeah. three percent of fifty five thousand that's fifteen hundred dollars a, a point <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i shouldn't be so so merciless and callous but i am right it's and oh okay he, he makes the point there yeah sound enough of course you don't want to leave double fives to hit given how yeah. uh, fatal it's still too to good be. there's very little chance of leaving a shot oops <laughs> open mouth insert foot 2-1 two, 2-1 one. Two, one. and i guess if if you want to leave some hitting numbers it should be double fives because uh, yeah that's just one number where yeah. the others would would be more but you can also leave zero numbers which uh perhaps he's considering yep. remember but, but, how i said at the beginning i really wanted to see a world champion win and i was really mad at one of my world champion friends that didn't even enter standing right here mike svabodny he didn't enter because he's afraid right mike <laughs> yeah and, and of course the, and it's too far away he had to walk all the way down the hill to play right and the point for Frank of actually leaving that sh shot, I suppose it is much because he now now Victor's on the bar. So if you he, if he's gonna clear the point, it's it's much easier when he's on the oh, bar and do, he only leaves would, one would shot. You, was there any logic to clearing the six point there? No, no, you let I him. I don't in? think so. That give him another way in. Okay, that looks like the normal. It would have been bad. <laughs> yeah, you give um, him another chance to come in and chances to leave shots when he does. Okay, this is a race to see whether or not Victor gets gammon and uh, I like Frank's odds yeah mm -hmm. um, I think X XG says he's he's 80 86 percent to get yeah. G'd now um, there's Victor. a formula where you can figure this out but I forgot it well it's essentially it's like a race county so, rolls so county you can um, county. if you can evaluate the race you can do it for this sort of position as well so every roll is about eight pips and you can just keep adding them up uh, two to one, Frank. He's going to be ahead six to one. So generally, you don't want to miss crossovers, and you don't want to have too many checkers on the same points. But I think at this point, Victor should probably play for for letting his high doubles play well because he needs something like that. Um, like that one, for example, Ooh, that plays pretty well. It's big. It's very big. He's got a reasonable chance now. His yep. gamut just went down to 42%. He's now favored not to get gammon. That's amazing. That was a huge, huge roll. He needs a big number here. And he got it. That's a big, big number. Now, if he rolls a five without a one... Or a six without a one, he's off. And even still, he could get off unless Frank rolls doubles. Five or a six without a one or doubles. Nope. He's got to sweat the roll. Double two or greater. And he's gammon. Big, big roll that double six. He okay. didn't do it. Okay. A sigh of relief. See, they both feel robbed. That's what happens <laughs> in back heaven. Frank feels robbed he didn't get the gammon. Victor feels robbed he didn't get the win. <laughs> they both go home unhappy. That's typical backgammon players. I think they're letting the transcriber catch up here. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm very proud of Frank Frigo and his partner, Michael Pines, who started the San Diego, they didn't start it, but they've taken over the San Diego club. They're promoting it all over town. They're getting a whole bunch of new players. They got 35 people the last time. It's become a hotbed for backgammon, just like Flint, Michigan, Chicago, New York, Florida. Of course, Florida, thanks to Karen Davis, has the largest backgammon club right now. But I think San Diego can catch us with these two guys promoting it. And that's what it takes to grow the game. Local clubs bringing in new people, showing them how to play, making them feel comfortable. <clears throat> don't charge them too much money teach them the basics of the game don't hustle them <laughs> we had a guy in our chicago club that any new player that walked in he was all over them trying to take their money i won't name names but 
No, I won't name names. I'm so tempted. <laughs> I'm such a mean guy. I want to name names. Yeah. So, so this play, uh, Victor uh, trying to decide whether to make the 11 or hit loose. Uh, really close place, of course. Often, it's very often right to make an outfield point rather than hit loose in your inner board. But here, he is outboarded and the outfield point is, after all, the worst outfield point, the 11. So, it's somewhat worse. Why is um, it the worst? Oh, no, actually, I'm wrong. It's hitting is, is, is best. <laughs> Um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's close. It's close. Yeah, it's close. But yeah, so that's really it's, why it's they're the worst closer, because it only it only is six away from one inner board point. Whereas the other outfield points are six away or five away from other several points. So they, yeah, they, they yeah. They block yeah. more and they are easier to bring in. Exactly. Yeah. You're writing a book, aren't you? I'm writing a book. Yes. When's it going to be out? Well, it's uh, let's say in a year, something like that. So, not soon. Yeah, it's all about me. Is that correct? Yeah, that's most of it, that's, at that's, least. That's great. I can't wait to read it. Um. So yeah, not not a trivial decision there for Frank because uh, when you have the advanced anchor and the upper hand, you often want to play a bit safely. But still, the double hit was tempting with a stronger board, and I think it was also the best play. But was a difficult decision. You might notice we're up to a 19-point match now. Most of the ma all the matches be before this were 17. Oh yeah, so they're, they're going to get longer and longer. Is the final 21? I think so. Okay. Finals 21. So if Victor can't enter here, he's in big trouble. But he anchors. He entered and entered and anchored. Yeah. And oh, the. The double aces can make the eight point, but then again, where's the last one? Really, no. <laughs> where's the last so, one? So actually, quite bad yeah. roll. In and Chicago, he, we call that a yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, but what's he gonna do else next? So, and a blot on the ace point, not not. I I think. Uh, you, you, we'll you see it. it sometimes on the screen. I think it's like you know, maybe 1.5 to 5. I think yeah, 1.54 is the 4. PR yeah. Yeah. versus 5. Yeah. Frank is playing 4. four. Yeah. Um, so double deuce is yeah. What point to make Blo blocking point or the deuce point? Very very well. Good actually, choice. when your and opponent is on your on your five point, the eleven is a good blocking point. It is. It is. Um, so if he would have made another blocking point, it would have been much to uh -huh. be able to play more uh, uh, comfortably for the future. Not so much that it blocks the anchor better. So you can um, see right. at the bottom that Victor's playing at 1.51, um, impossible PR. Frank's at 4.15, which is still excellent. Yeah. And Victor, in, in the interview last night with Victor, he says, I don't care at all about the PR. I want to win the world championship. And he, of course. He, he dropped some cubes he knew were takes, but he felt that was the right thing to do given the situation, and I love that. Lots of people think that we're putting too much emphasis on extreme gammon and PR, we miss the good old days when you didn't know what was right, and everybody had different styles. The game is still, I think, as or more fun now. Yeah. And the game is growing like crazy because of it. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, the main thing is to drop something that you know is a take as an adjustment. That is one thing. The other, another thing is uh, rationalizing your mistakes as adjustments. Sure. Um, and Victor's what? in, in uh, Sanders' first match, he took a long time to give a cube that was a huge pass, and he got a fairly inexperienced player to take it, a point four take. So there's some poker in this game, and S Sanders certainly knows how to play poker. And he applied it to backgammon as well. I think there's a guy named Gus Hansen who knows how to play poker and plays a little backgammon too. There's a, in fact, there's, there's quite a few... If you start looking at all the very top poker players, you'd be surprised how many of them are really good backgammon players. Phil Locke, Daniel Negreanu, 
Eric Seidel, of course. Eric Seidel is one of the winningest players in the history of poker, and he would be a monster at backgammon if he stayed with it. He is a monster. He still is? Mike told me he still is. So a nice pay now prime making play by uh, Frank. Yes. And now he he's in great shape. Yeah, he ships it nicely from the bar, I think, with so many it, shots. It, it is a take, though. I, I, this I, is not an easy cube to I, take. I... I uh, I mean, we, I would have passed it. I mean, it's, it's clear that it's clear that you can win a lot of games, but it just looks very, very dangerous. Um, wow. Of course, of course, Frank is up four to one, and I think that is probably what makes he passed him it. Take. He passed it. You can't fault yeah. him. It's no, only, no, no, no. It's only a five percent error. Yeah, yeah, and it, five point oh five five error. And yeah, by the I, way. Oh, oh my. I think it was even less than that at at a higher analysis setting, but but I mean. Uh, regardless of exactly what the equity is according to XG, I think is a very difficult uh, take, and and they, it, it was also very very close. So, but but uh, good cube by um, right. Frank, nonetheless. By the way, a five percent error on the on a cube is nothing. It's not that big at all. Exactly, because cubes are hard, and and if you make a little mistake, it's a big PR and equity swing. But mentally, it's not that big a mistake at all. Exactly, exactly. You can easily make a yeah. 0 0.05 mistake and still have a very solid understanding of a yeah. position. Yeah. What's That's your PR, uh, Thomas, overall in the BMAB? You're under it, three, aren't you? Uh, yeah, in the BMAB, I'm at uh, a 2.8, I think. And, and isn't your cube PR higher than your checker play? Yeah, I think it it's, is for uh, it's true almost, of almost all everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, th so don't fault. Don't look. Don't think you made a five percent here. In fact, I think no, XG no, no. should should weigh it differently. Should weight no. it differently. Um. All right. Five to one is a nice start for Frank. Yep, and uh, Victor looking to take a guy off his yeah. uh, twenty-four point, but also to hit, of course. So he'll do that. Uh -huh. I've said this before. At this score, you wouldn't think it makes a big difference, but you start putting cubes in, and a, a, a take for money could be a huge take or pass or not double when you're still at this level at five to one. Yeah, especially the recubes. Uh, yes, uh, that that they change a lot. So yeah, um, and here he probably wants to activate the checkers on the twenty-four. Uh, never good almost uh -huh. to have more than two checkers on the 24 point and thomas and, uh, brought up yeah. a good thing the recube that's the that's one of the things that makes backgammon so much fun when you give someone a cube they can use that cube at, if they got it at two to turn it to four the player who gave it away can't do it again in poker you can make a bet and next time you can still make another bet from either side so that's one thing that's unique about the cube i use the doubling cube when i play gin rummy golf when i shoot pool it's just such an incredibly fun uh, betting tool, and even if you're not betting money, if you're just playing match play, it just adds so much to the game. Yeah, very big hit for from yep. uh, from Victor, and now he he has the upper hand. Quite a well, bit. Yeah. Especially since there's no good five, he's still leaving shots. Yep, but he's his his guys stuck on the twenty four points still make him have a lot of work to do here. Um, but he would like a six. Six yeah, one. Oh, he's got a choice. Solid. Yeah. It's really solid. No, he wouldn't make the bar because he'd have to leave too many blots. And hitting is usually right. True. You got to make the... He has a couple good aces. You got to make the eight. The eight yeah. is, is best, of course. My, Lock, one, of my mentors, I, I, one of my mentors I forgot to mention that really helped me for years, Jake Jacobs. I love what he says. A point's a point. A pip's a pip. <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah, it really is that simple. Um... Okay, so Victor's got Frank pretty nicely hemmed in, but but on the other hand, he he is he is um, he, he doesn't is, have a lot of builders. He doesn't have yeah, a lot of and he has robustness three checkers back there himself. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, his advantage is smaller here than many people would think. I think. I mean. Uh huh. Um, yeah, he's only got a ten percent edge in this match right here. In this game, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Fifty-five forty-four. So he can escape a prime or he can make the three point. That's, that's actually two pretty good things. Well, one is much bigger than the other. What's well, it? escaping the prime is big, but, but it's just making the three is such an efficient play as well. I mean, it's not like he has 
if five builders there aimed yeah. at the three points. There's only two ways proof. to make that point: double five and five three. And you, he just wasted one of them. Yeah, yeah. It was, that was but a it's pretty uh, big error. Yeah, but it, but it, yeah, it's uh, it's not that easy. I mean, he 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 runs out in front of a strip midpoint, and he really wants to escape a checker there. It's very easy it's for just, me because I can see XG. I know exactly right. what to do. Right, <laughs> right, and here. The best play by a lot is coming off the 23 point, but that uh, that also takes some guts to do. But I think the hint is that everything else plays so extremely poorly. Somebody asked me who's left in the fighters bracket. I won't do it in the middle of this game, but I took a picture of the screen. Uh, the most advanced player in the fighters bracket right now is Morton Holm, an amazing player. And he's doing a book on this. You can go to his website and you can bet on just about anything and anybody. I've already lost money doing it. I think Morton got killed last year when, when a lot of people bet on Sander and he took the bets. So, Frank in trouble. <clears throat> And pretty interesting cube yeah, yes, decision. Very, I very interesting. Um, Morton's website, by the way, if you want to place a bet, clubgourmet.dk. So, yep. Um, Frank is thinking about doubling. He's got a direct six hit. Oh, he rolled. I'm sorry. Five three. Yeah. He uh, tries to take some desperate initiative. Very, very nice play, actually, because it was was hit or get hit. Or now it's probably going to yeah. be both. But <laughs> This is but what we call a tempo hit. He's yeah. trying to keep uh, the tempo away from uh, Victor to give him his full roll. The exactly. full roll could hurt so a lot. Many, so many numbers that anyway. could have pointed on him otherwise. Yeah. This is a big double and a big take. Yeah. And this is a hard take for me. I know it's a big take, but the take is almost always harder than the double in these kind of games. All right, he took it. Good for him. Mm. He sees a lot of life. The key, the key is that he is not on the bar. I mean, in these sort of <laughs> positions where you could get blitzed, Ooh. not be on the bar it, yet. We're gonna see, are huge. we going to see a switch play? Yeah. No, uh, we're not. It's either that. Or, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, either it's that such or a good prime. It's either that or making the prime, it's, yeah. It's such a big priming play, such a gorgeous prime. Yeah. Five, Five primes are almost as good as six primes. Did you know that? I I didn't know that. You didn't but know it's, that? You should put that in your it's book. Nice to know. You should put that in your book. But and they're better than four primes, and a five prime is really worth a lot, especially when your opponent has three checkers behind it. But he's looking at the switch play, which yeah. isn't terrible, which was my gut reaction, by the way. Yeah, and it it, it is quite difficult to to. Um, um, to choose between two plays of relatively different nature, like completely these two. different yeah. ones, blitzing and one's priming, totally different game plans. So it's not like one of them obviously dominates the other. Uh, the computer says that the priming play is better, but not by a lot. Four percent. Mm. Four percent. Okay, he made the right play, which is going to be, you're going to be tired of my saying that, because these guys are so good. Yeah, excellent move, excellent move. In and out. But still, Frank with a decent priming game of his own. Of course, he didn't want to get hit on the on his ace point, but it's not all bad, because uh, he, he it improves his priming game. Do you make the three point here? Do you break your prime? You do. I think you have to just do. because. Yeah. Okay. You. Ah. Okay. You could also have put a builder on the five. Yeah, it's yeah, close. It's yeah, close. It's not obvious. It's not it, obvious. But there's enemy. a checker on the board bar, and inner, uh, every inner board point is big, because yeah. he's more likely to dance and have less flexibility coming in. This is not that clear. It's close. I think the argument, perhaps, for making the three point is a little bit that you're you're very advanced compared to to Frank. So 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 you're not primarily playing a priming game at this point your 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 main game plan is racing and and to an extent blitzing and and frank is actually the one with the timing advantage as far as priming so I see. but i mean it's uh, to me it's a very difficult choice because you give up and i mean look at the blocking structure he has now it's not easy to give up 
give up on that. I think both plays made a lot of sense there. The mm. hit or up, again, are two totally different concepts, and they're close. You yeah. Can, you can do either one. Both of them are things you really want to do. <laughs> so um, if, if you hit on the five point, you slot a great point, and you take away his only checker that could escape with a single die, right? And if you come up, you finally have a guy of your own that can I either challenge or or escape. So this time it it looks natural to me to to make the three point actually. It seems yeah, the, okay, this it's keep close. is it's keep close. okay, fair enough because this of course it keeps the priming structure, but this looks a little bit unnatural, but in the short term it it is strong of course. So a tactical move. Two down is right here. You keep the structure. It's all about structure. Okay, so you don't uh, shift from from the um, nine to to the five, and I suppose that is because you want to keep blocking the twenty-two point guy, um, or at least that should be. Yeah, part if he of was it. at the edge of the prime and the three point, it would be a different play. He could hit and then hope to roll some sixes, but now it's just too hard to get out. He's got a prime. But 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 on second thought, it's it's actually also that he blocks a twenty-one point guy. The fact that he can only jump out with sixes and not also fives, that, that is actually huge. Uh, he, he probably tactically just wants to hope that, that Victor crashes immediately, can't roll a five or six. Mm -hmm. But not an, not, not an easy play. I mean, it, it's so natural to cover our five point when we have it slotted. So uh, Especially when you're leaving a double oh. shot when you don't. Th yeah. This looks unnatural to to yeah. to be playing a priming game and 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 uh, put guys on your ace point. It's usually not what you want to be doing. Um, but it it follows the plan that that keeps this structure. So this is um, this kind of a variant of the best play. It was just that it was better to keep it slotted than put it on the ace. But he kept the his structure, which was the right idea. Um, of course, very strong number for Victor. This is a great number. Yeah. Comes up and out. <clears throat> yeah, question is here, do you, do you give up or do you try to win? <laughs> the, the, I mean, if you give up, you play safe. Makes yeah. sense. Both ideas make sense. Well, he's trying to the, win, the, and so would XG. Yeah, the play he's looking at now, of course, going to win more, but it's also going to be painful when you don't win. So, I think Victor should shake more. <laughs> yeah. See what, the, the see what good it did him? <laughs> right. The difficult thing for Frank uh, when it comes to winning this priming battle is is the guy on his ace point that's real really liability well not being at the edge of the prime is a killer too with three checkers of course of course but in his front <laughs> yeah in his on the in the front he's part got a problem decision. on both sides yeah but but he hit the checker there uh, of victors which was very important because that checker could have moved freely otherwise and so victor could never have gotten stuck back there but that's that's a risk he he actually faces now if he's really unlucky here i guess you cover and it's cover and hit but it's close it's yeah. close prime right. versus prime checker plays are to me the hardest part of the game back game defending back game plays are tough but prime versus prime man Move one checker, one pip, and you're all of a sudden you got a blunder. That's very true. I mean, uh, they both face some uh, tricky decisions in this game. I hit and come up with the ace. You got to get those back checkers moving. And by the way, here I am. For once, I'm right. You got to hope to win this way by getting some time and getting your checkers up and out. Yeah, yeah. Made it, it does two thematic things. It comes up to the edge of the prime, and it hits off the edge of your own primes. So right. Even though your own so-called prime has a made ace point with it. <laughs> I'm surprised that 
before this roll, he had 38% winning chances. I didn't wouldn't have thought it was that high. No. It certainly went down now. Yeah, it's because now Victor's risk of crunching has almost gone to zero, which was... And Frank's risk of crunching is very high. <laughs> By crunching, we mean he's going to waste checkers and throw them down to his lower points where he doesn't want them. Yeah. We're not talking about the cereal. Isn't there a crunch cereal? Yeah, I think there is. So, I don't know. Does Victor even want to enter? <laughs> Maybe he's trying to roll so much to make sure he knocks the fours off the dice. Mm -hmm. He didn't do a very good job of it. He's got to hit. You got to yep. keep your prime. Automatic play. Not a bad roll, though. Unless you get hit back. Yeah. I mean, there's there are a lot of Gs now. All of He's going to cover with a five and come out with everything else. Does he any cover with a four also? Nothing. Oh, this is a nothing roll. Two, one, yeah. Bring them both in from the Three, seven one, point. You get the most builders. People, most people break the eight here, but you get you get more builders by breaking the seven. More covers for the point. Yeah, and the seven can be a bit awkward. Why is it a tie the against the twenty-three? Why is it a tie? I would have thought the seven was much better to get those two to get more covers. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, um, I guess if you count. Oh, what's this? Whenever I see them make a play I wouldn't consider, that reminds me how dumb I am for not even considering. Even if it's wrong, I don't even consider it. Oh, no, I don't. Okay, yeah, there is argument for lifting, certainly. Yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a little bit awkward now for Victor because with his, with his uh, prime crumbling a bit, he really doesn't want to get hit now. Yeah. Before, he didn't really mind. Remember earlier I told you how mad I was that one world champion didn't enter, and that's Mike, and I'm also mad at Nesvet for losing. Another world champion that's here that I was rooting for. Okay, lifts. Yeah. It's an understandable play. Very ugly to get hit there. Yeah. And that's an ugly roll as well, even though it's why do you also clear the, good in yeah. a way. I was going to think, why do you clear the five instead of the three? It's close, so it's not worth worrying about. Yeah. You're, you're less likely to leave shots by clearing the five, I think, later. But you have a better structure by clearing the... Clearing the five, the three. I mean, close. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to how to make this play. Oh, I mean, one thing that can be said for clearing the five is, of course, that the checkers that you, that you moved. I mean, the spares they can be used ah, again for right? ones and twos. I see. But uh, yeah, but on the other hand, if you make the other play, you can somehow use the checkers that are left on the five point. So I, I don't know, but it, it was also. Uh, I don't know. I think it's also that you kind of want to crunch as as uh, as well as possible. You do. <clears throat> Usually, right to clear from the rear when you have to. <clears throat> Five is big here. Five can be a big number for Gammons, and he got it. He did. Hit. And he's coming out. Yeah, yep. suppose so. Double deuces, I guess, hurt a little bit, and 10 to 6 wasn't very instructive. Yeah, out. Uh, as dangerous as it looks, not coming up out is just worse. So, yeah, you have to come out. <clears throat> The other play, Ooh, crunching. Wow. Yeah, this this is not a good play. Now that we can see the numbers, th this is like a, a, a little bit classic when you look at the XG yeah. output. You think you don't want to come out because you don't want to get hit and get gammoned, but often like crunching your board gets you gammoned just as much. So, yeah, um, you don't want to crunch if you can help it. And of course, also staying behind that structure of Victor's. Yeah, well, here's what um, happened. You, hit, yeah. you get hit loose there, and then he makes the point. Gammons go way up. Ones and fives. Here's the five. Back checker. 
Yeah, and almost no winning chances um, for Frank here. Down, down so much in the race, you need to contain your opponent, which is virtually impossible with that sort of board. So, oh, here you clear the eight points, slightly better, not huge. As long as he's on the bar, bring him in. Because if he comes mm -hmm. in with a two now, you could run into problems next time with a six-one. Yeah, but but then again, then again, the problems aren't huge. No. I think that's one of the reasons you, it's not a big deal yeah. to bring him in. Okay. Because if you leave a shot and you get hit, well, most likely you win anyway. Yeah. Two five. Mm hmm. Six two. Okay. Not his best come in roll, but. If I were Victor here, I wouldn't be complaining. <laughs> no, you don't want to stack checkers on, on your ace point against this 23-point yeah. anchor, but, you know... 6-4 six four, six four is the horror shake here. Yeah, double aces is excellent. You clear the six. Yeah. You do. And take two guys off, so... You're probably going to get gammons anyway, so don't take too many risks. That's true. The gammon race looks very good for Victor, so probably the main r risk that he doesn't win a gammon is that he gets hit. And usually you want to rip guys off your ace point against the deuce point anchor, but you can't hear when he's on the bar, obviously. <laughs> you see what Victor just did? He took the forced move first and then looked at the rest. Yeah. It's always what you should do. If you have a forced move, take it. Then try to figure it out. Yeah. And here it's right to peel. Yeah. Uh, again, it's like you you don't want to put the guys up there on, on, on the ace point because, well, basically, even if you do get hit, it's extremely important to have three more guys off. Ooh. So it does that. It's, it's probably safer for, for not getting hit in the long term, but it's so much worse both when you get hit yeah. and when you don't get hit. Well, if your worse. opponent's board was better, I would do this. But with that board, I wouldn't be afraid to peel. Yeah. Matt Congair is uh, in the chat. He's the one that taught me the biggest mistake most people make bearing off is not peeling. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Victor knows this. He's going to make the right play. I'm giving 17 to 1 odds. Oh. Not for nice money. Odds. Not for money, though. Oh, wow. <laughs> Putting it back. He feels he's got the gammon anyway. Not a good play for Victor. No. For one thing, he can leave a shot now with two high numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And he can not win a gammon yeah. even if he doesn't get hit. That, I think that that's, cost that, him that's gammons. a pretty big deal. That cost him gammons. Yeah. There's a funny roll. Now does Tom and move both checkers off? I would move both checkers off the two so that a two leaves a shot. Leaves a double shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Six, two, five, two, oh. four, two. They all leave double shots. You're smart, Phil. That's a... I'm smarter than I look. Yeah. yeah. That's that's this amoeba play that Michi wrote about in his uh -huh. uh, in his book. Michi's Splits. got great terms. Splits, I love this. Splits, you know. <laughs> oh, he didn't well, roll the three. No. But so the, the, like the other advantage, though, now is he's getting a double shot because he split. Yep. So he's got twice as many ways to hit. And he got it. Now picture Victor with uh, three more checkers off. It, it, he would be a lot more comfortable now. Certainly, yeah. Um, although he's still in, actually in good shape, but yeah. problem for Frank is he'll never be able to create a structure that Victor can escape. Because Don't he, say never. There's <laughs> well, four checkers left and there's two open points. All right, I've all right. seen it all the time. Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Sorry. What, never? No, never. <laughs> well, hardly ever. What's What show is that from? I love that. Song. I think it's my, from My Fair Lady. So Frank trying to put his checkers in the outfield so that Victor can't so that when Victor comes in he, he's able to hit him back yeah 
like this. Now he has a triple shot. I believe Victor has four checkers off, and uh, he's hitting. Yeah, it's difficult to see and to be sure. I like 15-14. It covers more of the outfield in case Victor pops in and out to the outfield. And it's right. Yep. I've been working on containment games for about 40 years, and I'm starting to get good at it. Well, kind of good. Yeah, they're very, uh, they can be very difficult. This position is not one of the most exotic ones so far, at least. Mm -hmm. Every dance is very, very helpful for Frank to get off the gammon. Just bring it in. Uh, bring it in from the 14, you nope. mean? Yep, that's 2% error. It's supposed to go come out. Huh. Yeah, I think the back the back guy should join the other the other guys for covering the outfield there, yeah? Makes sense. So that's that that that, that makes sense. Uh, and and um, and then what with the deuce? I don't know. There's a lot of close plays here. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it's not it's not clear yeah. why one would be much better. This this one has the problem of of not uh, uh, not having your checkers at, on as many points, so uh -huh. it's going to be harder to hit, perhaps. But it has the advantage that double threes and double sixes close the board, or not not close, but make the five point. Uh huh. And also, of course, if you roll six five, it would have blocked him. So. Yeah, perhaps he's thinking about c putting a guy on his 10 points since double fives for Victor would be awesome anyway. So getting hit there may be, a, may be less of a deal than on other points. Maybe a bonus. You get another shot. Right. And at least uh, and at least it's not costly. So, yeah, yeah, and it's also shooting at the five point, which is the next point you really want to make. I like this. Yeah. XG likes it too. Or, um, yeah. In and out. Okay, triple shot again. Yeah, it's impossible to miss this one, right? Yeah, triple shot has never impossible. been missed in the history never of backgammon. Oh, oh look. that's the first time. <laughs> actually, he can still, he's not out of the race. <laughs> no, actually, he's off no. the gammon, but he's not no, off the race. Incredibly enough, that's a, if he rolls double six again, at least. Um... This is a pretty good sequence for Frank to get to here. Yeah. He was getting gammoned a lot. Yeah. Victor might kick himself later for not peeling. I guess if you're Victor, you don't kick yourself. You try to forget about the junk, the bad stuff. I think he has five off. I think so, too. Yeah. XG Hard says he has 75% or something. Yeah. He needs a six. <clears throat> That's a six. It's hard to tell how many checkers are off in these si in these si situations. Yeah, it seems to be f five, perhaps. Looking at the bear off tray in XG. Ah, yeah. ah okay. So it's probably seven off now. Big favorite. Unless there's some doubles here. Okay, that's not the doubles he wants. He's not out of this game by a long shot. And one of the reasons you peel is in case this happens. If he had three more checkers off now, this would be almost gin. Exactly, it's this and the gammon race. Right, yeah. right, he really blew that play. I'm not going to rub it in because Victor... <laughs> uh, you've only said it five or six times, I think. Have so. I? Yeah. No. <laughs> if he listens to this later, he's going to come over and hit me. He's much bigger than I am. But well, when I'm right about something, it, it's five and six is low. <laughs> well, we're into the range where he has to roll doubles. And it has to be double threes or higher. Could he have given himself double twos? No. It didn't matter no. Yeah. Okay. He would have had enough. Yeah. 
Right. He needs double threes or higher. Off. Threes or higher. Oh. <laughs> nice God likes to tease you. There were two rolls, two doubles that don't help, and that was one of them. That dice god is a meanie. Why are you so strict? Why do you make things so hard for us? Okay. Don't forget to hit that like button. And don't forget to play on Backgammon Galaxy. We've got a new app. We've got a new ser service. Be a little patient if you have some trouble getting in. It's amazing how many of these players here in Monte Carlo spend their spare time playing on Backgammon Galaxy. Because it has that XG feed and the point system, it's really fun. And you can play for money there, too. You can't play me for money, though. I'm smart enough to know. <laughs> Right. So three five now this place essentially like zero zero, right, Phil? Not a big difference. Yep, at least. I agree. I mean, big difference now compared to one five. And Victor again establishing that six five four structure as he's done in several of the games so far. Still needs some sort of improvement to consider doubling, obviously. Probably wants to see daylight and come out, even though it puts him under some pressure. Mm -hmm. They're both playing around 3 PR, which is really great. We've had some very complicated checker play and cube decisions. Yeah, great match so far. And yeah... <laughs> Frank wants to come out, of course, but he then he leaves a shot, and he can hit twice or something instead. Um, Hitting twice could be right. Yeah. Hitting twice is very wrong. 6-5. Six, 6-5. Five. So six, five. Of course, running even stronger than usual because you only have two guys on the midpoint. So, okay. He, I got to take a little break. Yep. Joe. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. okay. Hi, Thomas. Hi, you? Joe. Hi, Joe. Joe Russell with me now instead of Phil Simborg. <clears throat> yeah, so um, Victor wants to stay back now that he's getting blitzed, right? Yes. Place 11 to 10. And that's sort of an air ball, I guess, for uh, for Frank. He can hit loose, but what about... If he plays the five, what about the three? And if he plays the three, what about the five? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's not what he wanted to roll. Yeah, there is... Uh, we can see now what XG I... suggests. That makes sense. You can actually make a, right. make a point and hit loose. Yeah, you you just don't hit loose on the guy that you want, and you give up another point. So it's not super attractive. It's just that everything is even worse. Um, can be pretty tricky in this sort of situation to find what is absolutely what things you even can do, right? See to see all the possible plays. Um, understandably, takes his time. Um, okay, finds another loose play, loose, loose hit, but doesn't make a point, so that's why it's a little bit worse, but yeah, it's the guy that you want to hit loose, of course, the four guy. leaving himself guy. with five lots with this play. It is, and um, a little too Victor considering doubling from the bar, which is understandable because he has a lot of shots, and if he hits... Frank is in really big trouble, so... It, it actually was a double. Look. It was a double, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. And as we can see now, could become a massive pass, depending on whether Frank dances or not. He doesn't. He rolls a good number. So, Victor's kind of fine doubling now, I suppose, given this sequence. 
I think this is still a, a very strong double. It is. I mean, just with all those numbers that make your bar point, right? Yeah. And and just even if you don't, you're still a big favorite. Well, so. you, well you got the numbers <laughs> to make the bar point. You got the fives that hit loose. You got the threes that anchor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, um, so Betty's going to double now, given that he considered it, it before last roll. Is it a take is roll. the question. Right. Is it well, a take? <laughs> Yeah, he, like, I guess it's a take. Yeah, yeah. it's a take. But there it is. but it's yeah. I mean, I mean, he has it's a the, very powerful double. Yeah, he has the board and the race. He has, and, he, the, has, and he, he has too many market losers to take a shake here. He could make yeah, the bar point yeah. followed by a bad shake by Frank. Hit a five followed by a bad shake. Anchor followed any, any of these things. If Frank doesn't respond, he loses his market by a long way. Yeah, and um. And also, like you said before, <laughs> posting the question, is it a take? That is also, right. by Wolsey's law, a very good argument for, for doubling if it's not super clear that it's a take. Um, but maybe to Victor it is clear that it's a take. I don't know. Um, anyhow. Okay, the problem you could say about all of those good numbers is he can't do everything at once. No. So if, if he makes the seven point... Well, he can get blitzed, and and you know, Frank has some chances there. Yeah. So you can see that Frank has has chances, but yeah. Victor's best numbers are probably just hitting the hitting the five. Yeah, he yeah, can, something like double fives. I mean, that's that must be <laughs> very very double good. Double five is super. That's, yeah, yeah. Just even like five two is a very good shot. He it passed. is, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. He did pass. It was, yeah, and understandably it? so. It was Absolutely. not an easy take by any means. Um, it was not an easy for human take. We look at right. it, it's an easy take. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, just looking at the equity, but but it's also, it's not one of these standard no. Uh, no. textbook type positions, No, right? great stuff. I didn't, like, I, that's why I was asking you, is it right. a take? Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Frank's leading 5-4, very tough, hard-fought match here. I guess Frank's was playing at a pretty exceptional PR, but he missed that 5-3 uh, play and then, and missed the take here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, mistakes in difficult spots, I would say. Absolutely. And very it, understandable. Um, so, yeah, does, does Victor want to step up? Uh, to to get into contact with that blot or does he want to unstack and get the cover for his prime and slot not a trivial decision by any means either difficult um and with an early advantage immediately to victor again i mean just a small improvement away from sending the cube here i suppose or is it already no i don't think so no. Okay. Not his best roll, but Frank needs to come in. Well, that's in with the force. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess he's a favorite, maybe. Yeah, makes him a favorite. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Oof. Yeah, still not enough to to ship a cube, no. right? No, I don't Given think so. That's... Oh, it is. Oh, a double. It, was, it was. It was okay. Okay. Well, I was on the same page as you. Yeah, yeah, that was my spontaneous instinct for sure. Um, but of course, sometimes when when momentum shifts like this, you don't grasp that you become such a favorite. That from... that's true. But but one thing I usually do over the board is whenever my opponent dances i usually stop a second to think uh, whether it could be a double that's, i think that, that's good practice in general. i think it's fantastic practice yeah. so many times i've like rolled on in those situations yeah, without yeah. pausing like it's when the, the momentum shifts like that and sometimes you're just so happy you just you know <laughs> yeah yeah and, and and the same even sometimes you double too quickly when you, you the momentum may have shifted and it's too good you should always pause after those and right right digest the new position yeah properly. yeah yeah 
but th that can be that can be pretty difficult for checker plays as well when your game plan shifts sure. uh, as a consequence of some some change like that but now i mean this is still a really powerful position for frank just because it's difficult for victor to to have good this, counter this play with his a, this structure. has to be a double here yeah because even though he has that checker back there it's it's going to be so hard for victor co to contain it did you see the double equity they show it uh, I didn't see it, no. Here we okay, go. Yeah. It's seems yeah. it's a double, yeah. Um, not a huge double because it's not a very volatile position, I suppose. Like, have a seat if you want. I don't want to stand up. Okay. Did you win your match? 11 1 against O'Hagan. You won? Yeah. I won 11 4 against Peter Jess Thompson. Oh, good. <laughs> So yeah, I guess Victor was looking to either anchor or hit back, and now, yeah, understandably, given that it was a double before the roll, okay. and now Frank improved considerably, yeah, then we have a pass now. It's also because it's now very easy for for him to escape the guy, and he can win some Gs, so... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Even a lot of his bad numbers can double hit inside. Right, right. And even in these variations where Victor anchors, it's still pretty close to double, I suppose. So, yeah. And... 22 here. Yeah, you don't want to leave the direct shot uh, by play, making the 7 point as you often do with double aces, right? Right. <clears throat> Okay. That's the reason in the United States we prefer die on checker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's there are a lot of people who did not like that rule at first, but they've come to love it. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of one of them actually. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. I think they should even go further uh and make it predominant die rules. So you don't even have to ever get a ruling whether something's cocked or not. Because how many times have you ever seen a cock die where it wasn't clear what num what number was predominant? Like one out of a million cock die maybe or something? Right, right. I agree. So, uh, so it's a difficult decision here for Victor whether he should really run or or just split. Because, I mean, he puts a guy in front of a huge stack and he liked to play 13-11 to contain one checker, but but XG really liked this running play, so excellently played by him. I'm not sure I fully get why that's just as good as 24-18, 13-11. Um, so it was, a, it was a really strong play by Victor. But now, more clear that you want to step up to, to I think he would. Have, I think he would have done right? twenty-four, eighteen, thirteen, eleven if he did not have to leave a man on the twenty-three point. I think. It oh yeah, he hits. he was, he was creating. Uh, he didn't create good sixes uh, by playing it as you knew, usually do. Yeah, ah, good point. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see that actually. But yeah, you're right. That's a very good point. So he, he st so Victor correctly stepped up, but got punished for it, and now. Okay, okay. Great shot. Makes his five point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Makes his eight point. Yeah. Yep. Equalizes. Wow. <laughs> what a response. Yeah, yeah. Just play 13 day with the last one. Obviously. Yep. yep. Not, not much else attractive. I'm not going to plot inside. And, um. Key roll for Victor here. If he, yeah, it doesn't want to dance. If he fans, for the sure. game's over. Um. That's, it, that is it over? It. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. Both sides rolled a couple of impressive jokers there, which you're likely to be doing when you're winning eight <laughs> matches or seven <laughs> matches and playing for the undefeated final. Yep. If you just keep going like that. So, yeah, so Victor plays nice response there. Um, 
which which was not the best response at zero zero but because he is down slightly it is now best between two very close plays right yes Yeah, 4-2, not the role you want, but maybe, after all, put the checker in front of the anchor, so... Sure. I can bust the anchor to hit. Yeah, right. I guess in this spot... And, and, and you're slotting a blocking point. Right, good point. I guess in this spot, Victor is not super unhappy to to go from the anchor no. either. So, so the argument was weaker than normal, but it seemed like a good play. That was equal with bar 18. Okay, so he didn't have to hit loose there necessarily. I think it was a very natural move by yeah. Frank, for sure. Um, usually right to fight for your high points in the early going. That's a good shot. Yep. Anchors and make yep. the point. Natural play, and now this... For a while, this will be a simple game waiting for doubles, basically. Or no, it won't. Oh, okay, he made that play. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so classic in these positions, the person that has the timing advantage has a racing deficit, so right. it makes it usually Pretty, relatively... This is about a three to two game with Frank having a slight advantage. Yeah. Simply because Victor's board isn't much of a threat so far, right? If he makes it a bit stronger here, and he has, he has yeah. like a one shake racing advantage. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but if Victor can build his board without the race changing much, he will slowly get closer to 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 even here as as Frank runs out of timing. Okay, yeah, with the racing deficit, he chooses to leave the shot rather than give up some distribution. Sensible, but not trivial when your opponent has such a strong board as Frank's. Yeah. 8683 eight, was slightly preferred. Get a little bit better distribution, less awkward, fewer awkward rolls coming up. Yeah, yeah. But his play looked good, I yeah, think. It's and Victor again, again risking a few shots in order to keep his checkers in good spots. Well, this, this clear. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he wants to risk shots anymore, though. Nope. Um, pretty close to an even game here. Yes, um, the race is relatively close now as well. So. Okay, interesting 5-2. Quickly plays it safely. I, I guess with, with how strong Frank's board is, you can't risk leaving anything. But now, this is an interesting play. I think he might be right. To go ahead and break the seven point. Yeah. Okay. Three two. I thought it was three one. Yeah. Okay. Seven point would be a, would be an error, breaking the seven. I was thinking seven to two might be right. This yeah, because yeah, all these plays have have different things going for them. It's not it's not an easy choice. Uh, this one obviously doesn't leave a shot. So. Um. Um. Okay. And four three now. Can you risk leaving something like running or playing thirteen six? Yeah, I think you can I would apparently. Play. I would, yeah. It's also because if you don't, uh, you don't have a threat. You've got to if, play somewhere. If you don't roll a two, it's really bad for you, for Frank. If, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And and if and if if he's got to basically roll a double or a two. Yeah, and if and if Victor played them into his inner board, then Frank wouldn't have had to be scared of anything. Right. So that's that's I think also a big point here is to never have too weak of a board in these sort of positions yeah this also makes sense 
leaves a little more but keeps the anchor um, but I think it, it's at least too many hits without solving your future problems. Yeah, it yeah. Solves a lot of his future problems. Yeah, and makes it somewhat uh, more uh, awkward for Frank to play, I guess. Um, yeah, Frank. Frank doesn't roll a double or a two. That's what's his, what's he going to shake here? You know, maybe he clears the seven point. I don't know. Right. There's okay. The he can hit cleanly. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay, yeah, he's just two, considering and he, that. Yeah, and he's got to play 13 to 7. He can't burn that check. Right, but he was considering coming off the anchor, I think, perhaps. But, yeah, this would play was best. Okay, now what's going on? Yeah, now we should have cube action, perhaps. He is up by so much. Um, and can really win the game here. Okay, it's a double. It's a big double and a take. Yeah. yeah. So Not generally, doubling. important to double when you can almost secure the game win, right? I think with here he just comes down with the five. Yeah, I mean now it it should it can all of a sudden become a little bit a question of what makes it most guaranteed that you right, can cash absolutely. next time. Right. Um, I guess here, here he leaves 4-3 and he leaves 4-1. And I guess also 4-4, four, four, but that's it. With the other one, what, is he, what does he leave there? He leaves 4-3 and 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, yeah like but, but, also, but also sort of 4-5 and 4-6 in that variation, I suppose, because he then he right. ju just, just right, jumped right. out. That's a good point. Now he doubles, and it's an it's easy pass here for Victor. It's too good. Yeah. Fine. yeah. I don't want to leave with your That's, again, the, where he didn't take the time to reassess the situation. Yeah. He should take the time. Always take the time to reassess the situation. Mm -hmm. The position went from a, a huge take to too good on Victor's dance. But you, a lot of times, are just so happy. Okay, I've reached the double now. You don't realize that it's too good. Right. I, I understand what you're saying. And, and that is also, we could also see exactly why it was such a big double, is that after a good sequence, he is all of a sudden uh, too, too good. good, and it's a monster, monster pass. Yeah, that is why he, he could have doubled roll before. Never quite so easy in practice, of course, because if he had suffered a bad sequence, it would have been an even game. So, right. uh, yeah. Looks like they're taking a short break. Yeah. Are you familiar with both of these players? Highly familiar? Um, I, I'm not. I don't know a lot about Frank. I know, obviously, he, he won the world championships in the past, and uh, I know he had some good results and plays really well, but I don't really know him that well. But uh, Victor, I know pretty well, yeah, of course. Yeah, Frank is a very fine player and a real gentleman. He's from uh, San Diego, and I've known him for like 40 something years, and he's one of the most liked and friendly players in the U.S. And uh, everybody knows who Victor is, and how strong a player he is of course one of the very best yeah, in the I, world top five in my opinion yeah 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 I, I have no idea where he ranks or you know but he's got to be right up there yeah 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 absolutely absolutely and and he's had a phenom player. phenomenal year this year too yeah yeah um uh has had a lot of tournament wins and high finishes and um excellent performances in general as usual yeah so, yep, going to be an interesting uh, rest of the match as well. And uh, is, was it 7-4 or 8-4 now for in France? I think, uh, think 8-4. Yep. So it's enough to uh, matter a little bit to the cube action. Frank should be a somewhat more conservative when, when there are some gamins around. And especially as far as re-cubes. But let's see. What's wrong with Bill, by the way? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think he, he, his stomach was bad okay, okay. earlier today. So okay. I mean, what's the PRs? I don't know. Actually. I think Victor is in the mid to low threes, and Frank 
I think might be in six or seven, six ish or something like that. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. I mean, he he was he was playing well, then made a few big mistakes, and then jumped up. I'm sure it's gonna <laughs> come down again. Yeah, it so. might be seven, six and six or seven right now. Okay. What's that? I'm sure by the happen? by the end of the match, he'll be down four range or something. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been playing backgammon, Thomas? I mean, you're also one of the top 10 yeah. players in the world, probably. Yeah, I've, I've been playing since 2012, 11 years. Okay, so that's not that long. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 40. Okay. And how did you so, learn the game? Um, I learned it from my girlfriend at the time in my early 20s, actually. Okay. <laughs> then didn't play for a while and then took it up later, so yeah so you ever come across the same girlfriend now <laughs> yeah once in a while we okay. live in the same city so okay. yeah and what city do you live in it's in malmo in the south of sweden okay so. and do you play with so, jurgen very often uh not a lot because he lives in stockholm which is uh, some 600 kilometers from okay. where i live so right. usually if i play locally it's usually in denmark actually because they have a pretty nice backgammon scene in Copenhagen, which is really close to Malmo, so. How far? It's about some, I don't know, could be like 50 kilometers from city center to city center. Maybe. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's great. And who do you play with there? What top players do you play with in Copenhagen? Um, yeah, there there were very many of them. This could be like uh, Thomas Christensen, Steen, Steen yeah, used Rundbeck. to be Grumbeck, now now uh, Steen Mikkelsen. He changed names. He got got changed married. His name. Yeah. His wife's last name. I think he changed to his old last oh, name. Okay. And yeah, anyway, and also his wife's name. Yeah, okay. both of them. Yeah. Anyway, um, um, Thomas Muir. Um, this yeah, a lot, a lot of very really strong, strong Danish uh, top players because they have they have a team competition in Denmark um, where a lot of the, the strongest players are playing. So so and Malmo have a team in this uh, division. So Malmo players get to play a lot I in Copenhagen. Anyway, they seem like go. they're starting. Yep. Mm. Okay. And so yeah. How did you get so strong? What what do you attribute? What what are your? <laughs> well, I, I I think it is it's difficult to say what what was what what has uh, uh, made my game improve the most because I tried many different things and then gradually got better. So it's it's hard to say what was 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 the main thing. I think, but but yeah, I mean, part of it is just playing and trying to figure out why you make mistakes and what's what's the best and. Yeah, just because I have I've, I've been enthusiastic about the game and trying to get better, and I think that's that sort of the mindset uh, makes it easier. Because if you think it's fun, it's easier to learn. I think. Absolutely. So, um, um, but when you review your matches, a lot of people look at their errors and their blunders and whatever. Do you also look at the plays you got right? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I browse the whole match, basically right. going going through, going play. over every every play. Yeah, and of course, I I may some matches I uh, analyze more closely than others. Um, but 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 yeah, I look at all the plays. That's one thing I do as well. A lot of people don't do that. They don't look at the plays they got right. But sometimes when you get a play right, if you got it right by a lot, you should question why was I thinking this was close. You know, like if you, <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. tough play, but it was you got it right, but it was right by point oh four or five or eight. You know, why was I thinking this was close? Is another good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good point. And also just to, I mean, uh, just to get the feedback that uh, okay, uh, my analysis in this position was yeah, sure. probably right. Right. That, I mean that that's also a val val valuable data point, not sure. just the ones where it's wrong. So yeah, but I, I agree. That's a good point. You win. Oh, Tom Z. Are they waiting for a monitor or transcriber or something? Huh? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Have we met, sir? What's your name? We met Thomas. 
Oh, ten though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just didn't recognize you with the beer. <laughs> I remember when you were at the club. Yeah. Right. Ten years ago. When okay, we're starting back here. Yep. <clears throat> Frank leads eight to four. And Victor chooses to split with the two one. Yeah. Reasonable. Well, this is the first round that I've increased the the to nineteen points over seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I heard from Phil said before that in the final it will be twenty one. So. Yeah. What? What's that? All right, some early hitting back and forth, and and uh, the players shouldn't really alter their opening strategy much uh, uh, at at this score. It's kind of similar to zero zero, uh, although of course Victor should be seeking a little more gamminish positions if he can. Okay, bit of an air ball, but it can run a back checker, I guess. Um, one good thing is at least that his blots are one pip apart, and so are Frank's back checkers, so duplicate some numbers. Not enough, apparently, because Frank can hit. Another somewhat awkward number. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's an interesting place. Slotting the five. Trying for some early development, but it, but he's outboarded. <clears throat> and Victor really kind of needs to come in now, I guess. Absolutely. He doesn't. That, that should be a double. And this, Is it a double and pass, I think? I, I, I don't know. Um, it's a take. Okay. Mm, only seven guys in the zone, after all. He passed. But yeah, he, he quickly passes. Not like not a position he wanted to see uh, play out. But but um, yeah, make makes a big difference when you add or subtract the checker to the attacking zone in those blitzes. And of course, the score is a factor here as well. Although not a super big one, this would probably have been. A theoretical pass at zero zero. Okay, so six three can come to the fifteen point duplicated duplicating threes and aces. This is it's not the worst either because it at least it duplicates sixes. Yeah. These are close plays, yeah. So he's going to cover his five gonna, point, that's for sure. He's he going to cover his that. five, and he's going to split to the 21, and he's going to figure out the <laughs> last two. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably true. Okay. Interesting choice. It's They're about equally good. Um, and Victor... Poor entry from the bar again, and he's he's soon in trouble again. I mean, I'm not saying he can't. Okay, he gets doubled, okay. but should I pause? I'm hitting my clock. But, I'm pause. Okay. but I'm not saying it. He cannot take yeah, this. Well, oh, this is a pretty clear take. Yeah. But but um, yeah. Another poor entry from the bar for, for Victor, and it seems he, he's at least considering it. But I'm think and I think he's gonna well, probably end up. Okay, the clock's not running. Okay, okay. 
I think Frank forgot to hit his clock when he Oh, I it. see. I see. Anyway, it seems like perhaps... This was actually no double. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but but Victor doesn't seem to want to gamble, perhaps, in, in these half, uh, half gammonish positions where he's an underdog like the last one. But, he, but here he took it. And so where course, do you play the three here? <laughs> yeah um in the back i yeah, suppose that's right yeah uh and yeah solid advantage for frank but even this solid roll probably wouldn't have been a market loser <clears throat> so that's probably why it's a no double right right Okay, of course, it was not a joker by any means, but still. She just hit on the three here. Yeah. Wants to stop Victor's checker from escaping, and also he doesn't anchoring. have much else. Escaping or anchoring. Escaping or anchoring, true. But he can't stay for long on that anchor if he makes it now. Um. Oh. Excellent number. How do you play it? Suppose you have to hit just because of how eager you are to get to the 25 or 21. I mean, normally, if the opponent has a checker on the three point, making your own five is going to be better. But here, it's, it's because you want to come out as well. Um, and also, your opponent has an anchor, so making the five is not as big right. as usual, right? Correct. Um, so, yeah. He seems to okay he considers the other one which is which he should of course do but i think seems likely he can find the best play here because it seems to fit the theme of the uh, the position here not so important to make the five point as it is normally. to prevent the attack and fight for an advanced anchor yeah or or coming out i mean just not getting stuck there. <clears throat> and I mean also since since he is not likely to to prime uh, or blitz Frank, then getting up in the race <laughs> is the idea. So hitting right. was important in that sense as well. Um, okay. I guess, does Frank want to slot the 9 or doesn't he want to get hit? I mean, with with Victor's board, slotting has some arguments to it. Absolutely. But in these sort of games, they are sort of races. You don't want to get hit. So, okay. Superb roll. Second best roll. <laughs> and Victor is now... Close to sending the cube back, I think. Score is important, even in these um, gammonless positions when, it when it's a re cube. Good like call. This. this is actually a, a small double. Okay, okay. Yeah. Difficult for him to lose his market by a lot, perhaps. So, not a big deal. <laughs> But after this move, if he doesn't get hit, surely he will double. Because um, now, if he can roll a, a set or something, it's going to be a market loser. Still a, a small double. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, get, I, with thought, all those... I thought it would have increased a little bit more than it did. Yeah, yeah. But with all those strip points, hard for him to uh, lose his market by a lot, perhaps. And still. now, will he have lost his market, or will it still be a take? It's going to be up 13 pips. Yeah, that's not a lot, of no, course. No, but he's, and he's got yeah <laughs> four points in front of him to clear, and another point seven away. Yeah. This, I'm guessing this is I still. Mean, I'm guessing it's still a take. Yeah, with how close the race is, I guess. Yeah. yeah okay <laughs> yeah it's basically right on the borderline so perfect borderline yeah so this is 
this is really where you want to send the cube you get full value of course your opponent cannot make a mistake but that's that's something you're willing also, to do with <laughs> frank has limited recube value because when he yeah. turns it when he yeah. turns it to eight <laughs> victor's yeah. coming back to 16 so that's that's true he's only going to be able to recube if when he's essentially won a race um excellent cube this one excellent cube Mm. When Frank gave this initial double, he hesitated as he put the cube out, but he'd already put the cube out. You can see that he was thinking. Yeah, should that, I have, du have doubled yeah. or not? Yeah. <laughs> and now he's perhaps having second thoughts about it again. <laughs> um, yeah. Somehow natural to take this cube. I think even it's now it's a borderline decision. It's given. such It's such a... And money, it's such a clear exactly. snap of a take. And it's, it's exactly. It's 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 an it's an easy money take, and and uh, it's a it's a position with few gammons. So that's probably going to make most players inclined to take this sort of cube, right? Correct. Um, um, it's only a drop because of the score and the limited recube. And, Absolutely, and, and even that that it's a drop by point, it went by one millipoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's pick him, but he doesn't know that, of course. Um, yeah, he would like he would like to phone a friend right now. Yeah, but it wouldn't help much. That's no. that's. <laughs> he doesn't that's, know that. Though. No, no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, anyway, this sort of. Uh, this sort of position where he has the 21 point anchor is a bit special in the sense that i mean victor it may have some trouble clearing the 10 point sure but but on the other hand the race is close enough that frank isn't super happy to be primed either right right so it's 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 it's, it's not it's not trivial who's favored by the contact in this position as as it usually is well, the one good thing you can say about Frank is that he's taking a lot of time to decide this. It's a tough decision, as it should be, because it doesn't matter what he does. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, he takes it. Okay, should he clear? I think so. Yeah, because the other play is ugly, right? So th yeah. that made, made that it less of a decision. Um, <clears throat> but but yeah, like we said, it's not. No, I wouldn't. Obvious. I would not have done that. Would you? Wouldn't you have gone ahead and made the two point? Just so oh, okay. In case of indirects. Well, I don't know. I Maybe Victor's not giving any. No, exactly, this time. exactly. I don't think he will. I don't think there's a single role where he will leave an indirect here. So, yeah. He might have considered it was six four, but that might be the only role. Mm -hmm, yeah, I think the the, the 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 argument against leaving the indirects there is also that uh, it's hard to imagine that you can't just leave an indirect next time. Right. Um, but six four would have burned another checker to the two points, so exactly. he might have considered it Ex while yeah. Frank had a, a blot in his board. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So he seems to have caught up in a race enough now to have shifted to a more advanced anchor. Well played. Because, I mean, some people think that every time you're down in the race, you must have the lowest anchor possible. And, and, and that is not the case, because you need to have an anchor as advanced as it suits your racing situation, which is kind of difficult sometimes. It was a ni nice play there by Frank. Even though he's down in the race, he advanced his anchor. Again, the Frank's limited recube is rearing its head now, too, because Frank doesn't just have to get to 80% to win. Right, he has to get to, <laughs> yeah, a lot, yeah. High 90s to win. <laughs> yeah. That's true. It's
Okay, Victor shaking a lot, trying to avoid the 6 1. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Yeah. Close race now, I guess. But Victor's up slightly, it's, it looks like. It's fucking even, it? even, exactly. It's exactly it? even. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. These guys are fighting. Yeah. Wow. This is how you get to the finals with undefeated in Monte Carlo. <laughs> right. A huge swing here, obviously, between 9 8 and 13 uh, 4. I mean, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, every time Victor's on roll, it's tied, <laughs> essentially. So Victor is up. Um, 75%. I think Frank would have been happy with his take if he had known he was going to roll double six and double five <laughs> and not and, and be able to run and double three and be able to... <laughs> Play all of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Oh, yeah. That doesn't settle it, but <laughs> yeah. But it should be after this nope. roll. Nope. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you pronounce his last name? Cool. Uh, for the record, in the but in the second chance, Mario Cool beat Dagfin Snarheim to move to the round of eight in the second chance. Okay, that was an excellent matchup as well. <laughs> but okay, then maybe we have more viewers now, and all of these viewers should, of course, smash the like button. Whether you like the stream or not. <laughs> right. Okay, excellent double threes for Victor. Needs some more improvements to send the queue, but not a lot. And we're also back to normal zero zero <coughs> considerations of gammons and recubes and everything. Not recubes exactly, but kind of. All right, six four. Yeah, that's one of those improvements. So if uh, Frank can't respond, and he can. All right, not going to be a cube for a while now since he has his three point. Hard to lose the market against that. Victor essentially has to run off his anchor and improve his structure a little bit, then it can be double. Okay. Back to close to an even game with Victor having some gammon advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, close game now. <clears throat> Ouch. Yeah, not what Frank was hoping for. Yeah, I think he just comes up to the 20 and goes to the 14. Yeah, that seems like a wise choice. Doesn't have many other good aces. So... 
Okay, yeah, he does that. Doesn't want to step up under the gun there, perhaps. But the problem is he stays behind. In addition, he's... I'm sorry? He's, in addition, he's also stacking his six point and stripping his eight point. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I mean, while the other one comes to, to a dangerous spot, at least it tries to escape a little bit. So, yeah, and but it, yeah. It forces contact, which you may hit back as well. Right. Okay. Victor likes the hit. Problem is the five, but yeah. Oh, what an excellent roll. Hits and covers. Frank probably needs to establish some more structure before he can consider doubling. And to get rid of his 90, his 14 points. But his main priority now is playing safely. Yes. He has finally escaped his checkers, doesn't want to get one of them sent back again. So... Okay, interesting. <laughs> Do you prioritize making your board immediately or or uh, arranging the back checkers I would that make you the, want them? I would make the board. Yeah? Yeah, that's a play also, making the 21. Problem is it lets Frank dump checkers behind you. Um, cover more ground if, if, if you stay back on the 24. And yeah, the 5 is important if you get immediate contact, but that seems the play, unlikely The plays now. were almost identical, according to X3. Point, 8 millipoints difference between them. All, all three of them? No, or? just the top two. Okay. Now what? That looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. He he doesn't want to create a point that just becomes that, hard to clear. Right. Um, create some sort of extra spares. And gives you more mm. chances to make the five point as well. Yeah, because you would have had to give up the 11 if you were to use that. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, has doesn't have a good six except something like this, yeah. Yeah, he has to come off the 21. Question is the 3, apparently. Oh, the race is pretty close. Very yeah, close. yeah, that, I didn't see that. That makes that makes a huge difference to Frank, a couple as, of these plays. As a basically <clears throat> a, a two-pip lead because he's ahead six. With yeah, that yeah, six. exactly. So it's, it's very close to an even race, you have to say. And that's of course why it makes more sense for Victor to disengage from 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 the twenty one there. Really didn't want to get attacked on twenty one. So this is this is really close to a race because if when you have the nine point. Uh, against the 18 point, okay. it's it's actually very easy to clear. Um, of Victor course, he won't have a, to think about that. Victor just took a seven pip lead in the race. Yeah, yeah. So he now he now he's the one breaking contact, um, as he should probably just checking the race. And yeah, let's see who gets to some. 9% of a racing lead first, <laughs> then the cube is going to be coming, more or less. Not a lot of adjustments to be made as far as doubling points and take points right now. No, the race just went back to even. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually stayed even for, for quite a while without... Okay. So, so if Frank it, has a 12 pip lead. Yeah. Victor rolls very small. Two one. Frank would be up nine pips. We could see a double if Victor rolls a two one. Otherwise, I don't think we'll see a double. Right. The race is relatively long, so yeah, you can you can take with a pretty big deficit in terms of number of pips. Hmm. So yeah. Let's see. Rolls small.
Okay, it's not going to be enough no. to double, but it's close. I mean, it's just needs to, uh, to gain a few more pips in the race, and he can send it. But Victor probably wasting somewhat more with his made deuce point. Not a super big deal, but has some sort of impact. That's a great shot. Yeah, it is. Frank has a one pip lead now. One pip lead is a lot, though, when you're on shake. Yeah, so it's effectively like five, five pips, pips, you could say. And that is, of course, because one roll wow. is eight There's pips. It's a double five. Yeah. Now Victor's ahead. <laughs> So one roll is around eight pips on average, right? So when you're down four pips, but you're on roll, the other guy would be down four pips, but be on roll if you roll average. So then it's even. Correct. So Frank mm -hmm. probably needs to roll a seven or higher here. Yeah. He does. Stays off the cube a little bit. Again, Frank probably needs a seven or higher. Wow. That's higher than a seven. A little bit. Yeah. And uh, Victor we'll now, see if Victor, Victor can now respond. Needs to Otherwise, perform. the cube is coming the other way. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's no. going to be a double. Yep. That's going to be. Uh, yeah, and it's also going to be a monster pass. Yeah. 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 All right, long race, but the double six has settled it. Okay. So it, I noticed uh, Victor doesn't like to slot with a 4-1 or 5-1. Or I mean, I'm not saying he should. I am just just noticed. He likes to split with those. And when you're behind, do you slot with 4-1? Sometimes, yeah. No, I don't, not I, necessarily. I almost never slot with 5-1. No? Okay, yeah. 5-1 is probably also the worst one to slot with out of the, of the aces. Um... I don't usually slot with 5-1, no. I like to do it more with 4-1. Because it's more thematic to me. Because when you have a tidy uh, front position as you have after a 5, then it makes more sense to split your back checkers than when you have a blot in the outfield. Anyway, they're all close. Hmm... Frank made a good play there. He did. Thematically pointed on head on the ace point with the double fives, as is so often correct in the opening. Usually when you, yeah, so often with a double five like that, it's correct. Especially, excuse me, especially in situations where you put your opponent on the bar and you don't have any other good option. Right. The Ooh. disadvantage is obviously if right. it becomes a long game, yeah, and, and, then you have the and, ace point out of play. And it's basically. a big disadvantage when your opponent owns a 23 point anchor and you have the golf in there. Right. So, what's going on here? No double. No. Um, Frank's up 17 pips. And Victor rolls a good number. It's a good chance he'll have a double on this shake. This match. Drop down to the round of eight in the second chance. The loser of this match drops to the round of eight in the second chance. So the winner is in the world final, the world championship final. 
and the loser would have to win three more matches to get there. So, yeah, Frank only came in with one man, which gave Victor a, a solid double and a pass. If Frank entered with two men, he could have taken. But one man and being under the gun was not enough with his weakened position on his side. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great shot from Frank. Victor will yeah. need to respond. Victor needs a four from the bar or some yeah. small doubles. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he's getting doubled otherwise. No, no, but, I mean, no, but it would be a good number, e of course. To equalize the yeah. position. <laughs> um, and he can hit. Yeah. Let's play uh, Just hit on the seven. Yeah. There's not much else to do, I suppose. Most fives and sixes hit from the bar. Oh, there's a dance, and this, this, was, this what is this now? This is yeah, the fact nine that, men in the zone bar. Yeah, and yeah. he has escaped the back checker. Right. That's huge. I mean, if he had both guys back on his 24 point, it would be nowhere near a double. But but uh, the fact that he's also threatening to escape his last back checker is huge. Um, it's going to be good an easy, double. That's easy a very take good double. for Vic Victor, but good, nice, nice double, yeah. Mm. <laughs> he could he, he could hit two uh, or make the structure yeah, but just play for structure. Th this looks this looks well, very natural off, I would have done this also how far off was hitting two uh, I don't think it was a blunder but it was a sizable mistake okay. um, it's of course inconvenient here to step up to the confined 23 points right but but that's so now Frank has got more men in the zone and here I would press the attack. Yep. yep. Again, because you don't have much else. Um, yeah, Victor in some trouble. Okay, an important hit at least. Yeah. Frank losing some of his momentum there. But Victor still has two men on yeah, the roof. Yeah, right. Two men on the roof still. And equal structures apart from that. Okay, well, he's mediocre. Got an anchor, but nothing special. Entering with two would have been the preferred. Yeah. So Victor would love to roll an anchor here, either the 22 or the 20. Yep. Or just enter at least and be able to stop uh, Frank's last straggler from escaping. There's okay, the that's a nice anchor. one. That's a nice one for Victor. Okay, good running number. Don't see that there's much else. Right. Frank really wants to escape that guy. And, yeah. He's up 31 pips. If he doesn't get hit. Okay, 6-2. Yeah, does he want to jump out or can he settle for slotting his own 5-point? Not an easy choice. Looks big. Jumping out looks big. But on the other hand, he wants to get those three guys moving at some point. So, And slotting the 5 obviously leaves shots and can get another 4th guy back there. So that was a difficult choice. That's too That's a great shot. Yep. He really wants to escape his his back no, guy, but what, pointing on the deuce point. point. He's got to be correct. Right, but that's, I think that's just why he stops to hesitate a little because it's nice to come out with that guy. But I mean, yeah, <laughs> uh, the other option was just too big. Or was there no guy on the bar, or are they stacked on the bar? 
It's only no, one guy on the one guy on the boat. Oh, okay, okay. That that. Yeah, then it was very obvious to it. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, it would be a redouble if he shipped it now, but three guys behind a broken four prime is just too much, yeah. But if he escapes one of them, or yeah, okay, it does like this. <laughs> Yeah, now Frank must deliver, otherwise it's coming now. I, th I think he's got to enter and hit, or what about a 3-6? Would 3-6 be enough? Enter that's, and hit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we don't get the answer there. He cannot double from that one, obviously. It's close game now. What a roll, what a roll. Oh, that's an excellent roll as well. Yeah, if he can't deliver now, okay, that's that's also kind of a very delivery. Nice yeah. 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 I don't think this is a redouble. What do you think? Well, I I basically saw XG's equity numbers, so based on those, that it shouldn't be one. But but I mean, it's uh, definitely worth considering. <clears throat> I mean, it's only four millipoints. Yeah, okay. 40, yeah, 41 yeah, yeah, millipoints. Yeah. It's, a very, it's, very, very, it's very difficult to be that precise, I believe. And the fact that he's down 9 to 10, even though it's only one point, is actually significant. Now um, here's the hit. Yeah. So Frank enters or gets redoubled, I presume. <laughs> yeah. Comes out yeah, in the process. Else. Wow. What a swing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 5 4. 14 and 9. 14 yeah. and 8, I mean. Yeah, he plays it safely. Can't leave any shots. Sure. Okay. How much is he down by? I mean, is He's, there any merit to no. coming down, coming in on 24? No. Probably not. The race is 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 the fourteen pips after or or before, before. the move? It's, yeah. on, it's only eight. Pips. Yeah, so it's eight pips. So he really wants to come out with that guy as soon as possible. So yeah, it better be on the twenty point, especially when Frank can so easily play safely in the short term. I mean, it would have been different if he had some numbers that he could hope for there. Good play by Victor. Yeah, yeah. Again, don't leave a shot. Yeah, but I would I would go to the uh, twelve point. Yeah, seems natural. I guess it blocks less ground, but it's easier to play safely for him in the future. Mm. His next problem is going to be clearing the eleven point and. Bringing those guys there make it easier for him to not leave a shot as he attempts to clear the eleven point. Here he, here he, you know, it's harder to clear. Yeah, he has two points now that are more difficult to clear. I don't. I mean, I, I understand also that Eight. you want to cover if if right. if uh, perhaps Victor rolls some number that ends up in between those points, but yeah. Yeah, does Victor want to leave a shot? Probably worth it with the blot, perhaps, right. and his strong board, but it's not obvious. In these close races, you really want to... Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is why it's fine to run, because it's not a super big deal that he gets hit. Right. Um, Even a hit and cover, Frank will... is considering disdaining the hit. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder if he, he knows is. how close the race is. Uh, sometimes over the board you you don't necessarily know what the race is. And given that Victor's the player with the anchor, 
Maybe he assumes he is up by more than he is. That is that's possible. In in any case, it wasn't trivial either way, but but still. Okay. <laughs> well, he has a different game plan. Yeah. That basically. Yeah, and now it's essentially it's a pure race. There's absolutely no contact left. Or, well. <laughs> you can see that Victor even considers coming out with, with right. the guys on the anchor despite being down by 11 pips. It's just because it's better for the race and he can't expect any value from that contact anyway, so... Yeah, that play is only... Uh, without plus plus, it's only 8 millipoints weaker. Yeah, and it makes sense because sure. there's so little upside to it. But, but, but again, he did, he did gain on this where Frank can't fill in his five point now. That that's true. That's true. But on the other hand, he can lose in 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 variations where he catches up in the race and gets attacked. But yeah, absolutely. But but it's uh, it's it's not a it's not an easy choice. But it makes a lot of sense to stay back when down by eleven pips. After all, so good play. Okay, he saves. Yeah, he did, didn't he? He gained a pip there, so we're probably going to have a transcription break soon. Yeah, there it is. Right? Yeah. They paused it already. He's changing. The roll was four one, right? Yeah, the roll was four one. They changed or, it to or a five one. Or at least one. as far as we could see. I mean, sometimes the fours and fives are not not that easy to see. Uh, but I. Oh, uh, maybe maybe he. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. Not a big deal, but. But I think it was was. Is a good play by Victor not to save the guy on the seven. I mean, he wanted perhaps to save a six, not to break the anchor, but breaking the anchor is not a big deal since he's still in the race and 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 uh, shipping a guy to the ace would have been costly for the race. So, seemed like a, a wise choice. Oh, he gets a shot. Yeah. It's interesting that XG actually likes to hit even though it doesn't minimize shots just because the race isn't completely settled, I guess. He takes away the double sixes and double fives, or well, the double fives is... <laughs> it actually had 8782 on top, but I'm not sure if that was plus plus. Okay, okay, but they, it, it said they were close. They were very least. close, I mean, yeah. I mean, two extra shots is a lot, but... Oh, and if Victor had had the checker on the five, five point, he would come. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So now it must be a matter of primarily ensuring that he can cash next time. But okay, he also wants to pick up that checker and play on too good if if Frank fans. So I don't know. He can probably can never cash if Frank comes in, can he? No. So, so maybe. Yeah. This probably minimizes the downside of an entry. And now, will he just cash it or play on? Uh, I think he'll cash it. Yeah, it's pretty greedy to play on with so few gamins in play, and despite and the mediocre board. And not enough covers exactly it's not it's but then what argues for playing on is of course that even if he fails to oh, look cover, it was it was almost a play on yeah maybe plus yeah. plus it'll get out get there no yeah it's just a little bit shy of a play on which we would have thought it yeah would. it's because it's um it's quite a parlay for it to uh for him to get punished there uh for playing on 
it's also somewhat of a parlay for him to get a gammon. He has to, right. he, he has to cover, and then he has to get the gammon after covering. Yeah, yeah. John O'Hagan, huh? Good job. Do you play some with Peter Jess Thompson also? Well, he plays in the Danish team uh, tournament, but I haven't played against him, no. But I know he is perhaps the best player in the whole tournament, yeah. He's, an, he's a really, really excellent player. So the PRs have come by. Frank has really come down. He's like at 448 now. He was up in the sixes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, he's a great player. He made some mistakes there at some point, so it jumped up. But yeah, it was gonna it was gonna come down. Um, so yeah, <laughs> not that much going on really. Twenty point versus the eleven point again. Yes, another game. And yeah, six one. Does it make the point? Or does it run? Because the the, the seven point is not particularly valuable. Yeah, but valuable it's four here. points in front of the twenty point anchor. It is, but escaping that last checker is valuable too. But it wasn't too. It wasn't too threatening because of the blot on exactly, the point. Exactly, exactly. So there were many things at play. Um, Oh, he can, he gets to come out. Good roll. And now I, I guess, we're again in essentially he, a race. I think he's up 21 pips if I've got it. That's right, I believe. Yep. Yeah, and should, should uh, Frank stay back there or not? Well, apparently, according to XG, not. Yeah. But I mean, it's not a trivial decision here, down, down fourteen pips, because not that many numbers are super costly, and perhaps it can can Victor's force Victor's going to have Victor a, Victor's to gonna have a double here, no matter how he plays it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, there's he has little favorable contact left, and he's down by fourteen pips. So yeah, fair enough. Um, but it's still a very interesting play, in my opinion, here. Do you stay back? Do you have enough to gain on staying back there? No, or not? I, w I would not stay and, back. No, this is probably a double and a small take. Probably 0.9 or so, or something like that. Point, 0 0.88, 0 0.9. He, no, he's not doubling. Okay. I don't know if you didn't know what the race was there because it seemed a, a very easy double to find his market if you knew the race. Yeah, he lost his market unless Frank rolls probably yeah. 11 pips or more. Maybe he had the race wrong somehow. Actually, Frank probably needed to roll 12 or more last time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big market loss there. He missed the double. Pretty easy position to count using the trans transposition method. Frank should get this right pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is, is he using that or I'm not sure. Oh, okay, okay. But if you use that, this is super simple. Right. And I guess also just visually looking at the the different sides it looks looks like he's down by lots but of course he actually, is very the right to using check. the transposition method you only have to move four pips four checkers yeah yeah to 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 get okay okay i see anyway he is of course if he's even slightly unsure he is very right to to count it and, and double check of course very important to get these races right and and know that you're down by 19 and not nine as your count perhaps said <laughs> yeah
anybody unfamiliar with what the transposition method is, well, they're just setting up the board, so it's too late. But basically, Frank was ahead two pips by having three men on the eight point, so he moves two pips back to the ten point. The two men on the uh, eleven point were eighteen were sixteen pips behind the, the the point in Victor's board, and then Frank had to move a man from the six to the one. Right. So you're basically comparing the positions of the Correct. two players, right? Yeah, when you get that method down, a lot of positions lend to a very lend themselves to a very quick count. The one drawback in that method is you often will have to then count the total race to see what your cube action is, but not that often. Usually, it's uh, either clearly not a double or is a double or. Sometimes it's on the border and you have to get the exact count. Do you use that method or do you count the total pips? Uh, usually I use um, uh, one of the colorless oh, right. counting oh, methods. Um, but in these sort of in these sort of positions where w that are pure races, I sometimes just count the pips okay. uh, because I find it relatively fast often. Um, but usually the colorless one. Okay, so it's pretty interesting here that neither of them is splitting because the other guy is bringing in checkers into the zone, so splitting becomes dangerous. And it's the same for both of them, so it's just keep bringing checkers into the zone. Um, And here's another one. And that's a correct play, a nice yeah, play by Frank. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Too dangerous and, to split there. Yep. And 4-1 <laughs> is another one. And here we come, yeah. the same play. Yeah. Of course, something like a 6-5 for Frank would be very welcome because he needs to... He's the one that will have problems developing his position if he can't get away from back there. So, even, so Victor would by far the most... Constructive position. So this is a, a, a so tiny a double. double. Okay. Okay. Tough find, I think. Yeah. Especially very tough leading 12-10. And as well as Victor plays. Okay, this is <laughs> this is the market right there, of right. course. As well as Victor plays. These these positions that are very, very small doubles, you know, you're not gonna play as well as XG. When no. you miss these point oh one or point oh these 10 or 20 millipoint doubles, a lot of times it's probably practice not even wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially if it's easy for your opponent to play. Right. Yeah, yeah. In this case, it seems he has gone to too good, which is understandable since he had a double before and rolled a huge joker. Yes, which is what um, we were discussing before. And he is taking his time. Yeah. Which is good. Which, which is uh, normal because he, of course, he understands that. Frank is rarely going to have more than an ace point game, which he can't take. So, but okay, he cashes it. Fair enough. Not that many gammons to be won after all. Okay, Victor plays the most. Uh, the least contact seeking of the 6-4 openings since he's ahead in the match he wants to play simple games do you do the same it, it, it depends a little bit uh, who I'm playing I would say if I if I feel like uh, if I feel like I've, I have a very big edge maybe I, I uh, I play some of the other plays because I know it's relatively close and, and it may sometimes be to my advantage, but yeah. Otherwise, I think I would have played the same, yeah, per default. What would you do? Kind of the same, same yeah. philosophy as you. Yeah, yeah. If it's a player, I feel I have a checkered. If I'm a stronger player, I will often uh, not make that. I'll often make the other play. Yeah. 
the good thing about making this sort of running play is also that I mean it's one thing that that it, that it doesn't lose uh, perhaps many games win many games etc but one thing is also that it makes your game plan easy you you know that you want to play with few gammons and you you make a play that makes it easy for you to understand what you need to do next uh, whereas That's a very good point like sometimes if you make a play that 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 makes the position pretty gammonish you will keep facing decisions of whether you should make a gammonish but more winning play and etc throughout throughout the game so so yeah he needs to unstack that ugly stack think he'll find this oh, okay I he didn't want to get hit he didn't want to get hit also understandable especially since Frank has a spare on his 18 point, so w he wouldn't have had to give it up. <clears throat> Huge roll. <clears throat> Even though it's ugly, that's actually probably a great roll because this is pretty close to being a race already. And all those pips, that's awesome. Yeah, Frank's actually 67.5% here. Some people, a lot of people might think white is the underdog here, but heavens no. Any, he's had many rolls to roll a double that would basically win the game. Yeah. And even if he's forced off that point, unless Victor has a very strong board. The six, yeah, yeah. And the 6-3 there is nice for him as well, so he doesn't have to crunch more before being able to play safely. Yeah. Yeah, Victor wants to build his board here should a shot come anytime soon. Not too many rolls away if Frank's unlucky. With each roll that Frank doesn't roll a double, his advantage decreases. It was originally around 70%. Now he's down to uh, 58. Yeah, so it makes sense. I mean, much of his advantage is that he has many chances in a row to roll doubles. And if he fails some of those chances, his chances decrease. Yeah, makes sense. And now it would be really, it would really hurt him to get hit. Yeah, Victor can't clear his midpoint because he's down in the race. I mean, this, usually in these situations, that is what you do, of course. But yeah, usually you're up in the race after rolling double force in this sort of position. He's not, and he knows so we're, it. We're at about a 50 50 game now. Yeah. Frank desperate to roll doubles. Yeah, the question is, do you save a six? I think you do. Yes, it's, absolutely. Uh, I mean, usually in these sort of situations, it is it is nice to save one six. I mean, if you ha if you can have one guy outside of your inner board and save the six, it's usually right. But to save the second one is usually wrong, in my experience. I agree. It's it, and it's also surprising how often XG will not save a six right. when it seems like you would want to save a six. Yeah, yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. So you give up some you give up a little bit in the race and sometimes running off the anchor isn't all that bad because right. you sort of have to do it so yeah like if he rolls a 5-1 he'll come up with our position 4-1 okay in this position Blake and uh, opponent only had a four point board but we rolled a 5-1 and and got uh, doubled Right, here's the 5-2. Is that enough to get doubled? A lot of volatility. So, so this is 21 shots and the other was 24. But this is two blots and the other was one. 
Yeah, and also, after this one, probably easier to safety your guys should you get missed. But you can get G'd. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep, Victor well, Frank, ships This it. is similar to our position. We got doubled here uh, in our doubles match, trailing uh, four, uh, five away, four away, and we snapped it up and got gammon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one, I mean, Frank's counting the race, making sure he's up by a lot. After he's done that, he's going to take this, I believe. Uh, um, guarantee, because, guarantee he will take this. Yeah, yeah. But he, he, he's making some sort of judgment of, of the race, I think. It's and, a and, lot of pressure you're playing yeah, in the yeah, finals. Yeah, of the you want to make sure. Bracket. You want to make sure, and that's. But I'm sure he'll take it. Yeah. He's, it's, it's also actually that when he gets hit, he hasn't lost. That's true. He sort of has lost, board. but yeah. I've lost many a game like this where I hit a checker and my punter rolled an ace and I danced and they rolled a six. I don't believe you, Joe. You cannot lose in that situation. No, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it adds some to it. I wonder if what, what would be the equities if the ace point were made and the race and everything else were about the same, if such a position could be constructed, would make an, actually a huge difference. Oh, sure. Because the gammons would go up as well. Anyway, it would... Okay, yeah. That's going to uh, destroy his PR. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Oh, I would have bet big that he was going to take that. He's mm -hmm. going to take a break now. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, I think he must have misjudged the race somehow. Because, I mean, because given the race and given the number of hit, hitting numbers, it should not be so difficult to take it. But I think he's somehow maybe misjudged his wastage there or something. I don't know. If Victor rolled like a 3-2, it would have been an immediate redoubt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Victor's low fours and Frank probably just shot up to five and a half or something like that. That was a, a big take. A yeah, yeah. Take. It was Blake a big take. Blake and I had a position like that in our match. Our position was worse. I rolled a 5 1, and we left 24 numbers. Our opponent had the best four point board. We were up 40 pips, and they, they doubled us. And Blake didn't want to take it, but I talked him into it. But we had to bet on the position. He would only take it if I bet on the position, so I did. And it was a pretty clear take. He got gambled. We did get game. <laughs> they, right, right. they rolled double aces. Double aces would have gammoned them too. Well, we'd have had a chance at a gammon. Our opponent only had a four point board. We did roll double aces too, but they still gammoned us. Take some more uh, water. You want some? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm going to get right in the restaurant. You want to say a few words while we're here? here so I'd like to express our appreciation to them uh, this afternoon at the 2 p.m. match uh, Mark Dixon set in for Phil and uh, commented with uh, Justin Noel and that worked out great and here tonight uh, Joe Russell has uh, stepped in for Phil Thomas Stenlin was uh, working with Phil and uh, you know, has done a great job, and Joe, of course, is uh, 
a world champion and a finalist a second time. So a great pairing of commentators. And as y'all know, I mean, these 19 point match here is, uh, an ordeal, not only for the players, but for the commentators. And, uh, wow. Yeah, Hassan, Dubai in September. Tar and I will be doing the streaming and commentary, doing some of the commentary, commentary, organizing the commentary. Okay. So, uh, anyway, the, uh, <laughs> so great match uh, let me see i can tell everyone well y'all have access to the brackets at bwcmc.com or wherever but uh look here mario cool one ricardo malas one a vincent i guess one the lady from Norway, Marta Jelseth, won. Morton Holm won. Uh, Nakasura won. Rogers won. And the loser of this uh, will take the eighth spot in the round of eight in the playoff. Probably tomorrow at 2 p.m. I haven't consulted yet with Arda and them, but my thought is that we will uh, probably show the uh, Vincent Jelseth match since neither of them have been streamed. And Jelseth will be really about the only woman we'd have a, have a chance to stream. And so I think they both deserve some airtime and people to see them. And then uh, probably the home uh, Nakasura match the cool and malas match we just streamed mario cool and then also the uh chris rogers had beaten balali so whoever loses this match will uh take over play uh play rogers but all of these people have been streamed so uh Thomas is back. The match is back on. I'll sit here for half a second until Joe gets back. I uh, feel like y'all have had quite a entertaining match so far. Yeah, for sure. It's been a close one. <clears throat> so Victor has looked hard to beat this whole week. Well, you know, he's played well, but he's also seemed to be kind of a... I don't know, karma or fate or destiny or something. He's won four matches where he was dead meat. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. just, and, uh, you know, sometimes you get on that type of streak, you know, and, uh, and certainly a player of Victor's caliber, you throw in some good fortune and it's uh, very difficult to, uh, to overcome that for, yeah, for the other. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. <laughs> Joe's coming back. Thank you both so much for what you're doing here with the commentary, and uh, have a good rest of the match. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Just fine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it was an interesting decision where Victor refrained from hitting to, to keep his uh, uh, anchor, which was right, but he got blitzed anyway. But now he hit back, so that's where we're at. Okay. <clears throat> and making the, 11, uh, the nine point is pretty nice here because, for example, the Three point is open. So, um, and it, making the nine is clear. The, the tougher play is whether to play 21 or six. And I guess by playing. But, but I think he, he already entered from the bar with one guy. Yeah, but he's, he still has two more left, right? Mm hmm. Okay, okay. Yep. Right, he makes the 11. 11 also very strong with the open five point. But 
has to give up the mid. So he's up 23 pips. This looks like a double. It's a small no double, but it's, it's a practice okay. probably a good double. A, a bigger no double, 54 millipoints. Yeah. Seems like a match score thing. Um, at zero zero, you know, I, I don't I, think that's much. Yeah. Mm. No, I, actually, it would be a stronger double here. He's trailing fourteen to ten. Yeah, but that's that's what I mean. Okay. At, so I mean, I'll, at zero zero, it would not. No, want, not be, he, even, His be, advantage isn't that big. Right. Yeah. Mm. It'd be a much it'd be a clear no double at that score. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, Victor has an anchor. Uh, Frank still has two guys back there, and he's not in that much danger. So, famous last words, but still. Nice duplication of twos. Okay, does he hit this time? Yeah. No. No, he doesn't. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can see the answer, but it's it's, it's not a trivial decision no. versus a four-point board when you have an inner board blocked uh, and you're up 14-10 with a two-cube in play. I mean, yeah. Uh, so he refrained from hitting once in this game where it was right, but this time it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he, yeah, right. Because it's because uh, because gotta, was, they're going to have to catch up. Because his hitting hitting would have moved Victor's checker the exact same way, just not picking up. Yeah. I think this was the right play for by Frank. It could have also been reasonable to play the man in nine to five and play fourteen to eleven, giving you some attack on the twenty-four yeah, point yeah. if you need it. But it, it makes a lot of sense up in the race to get away from sure, this absolutely. hemmed in point. I agree. Uh, with a huge board advantage. It seemed like a very good play, I think. I but, think it's uh, right, too. I think the other play had merit, but this is number one. Yeah. I guess we'll find out. I think it's uh, because, I mean. Can I make fun of Thomas' commentary? I mean, I don't think I'll have an opportunity to. Okay, make sure to say who you are. Hi, I'm Steve Sachs. Tenth place last year, Monte Carlo. This year, uh, just came to show up. My good friends Thomas Tannelin and Joe Russell. How y'all doing tonight? Okay, but yeah. What okay. a shot! Yeah. Average, what a shot! <laughs> it does everything. Average plus. Now. Okay, so basically an even game now. Three ninety four to four ninety five, respectable numbers for this pressure match. Yeah. Yeah. It's understandable move by Victor in the sense that he really doesn't want to get hit. But the great superstar shot by Frank. shake. Yep, that's a strong one. Are you going to risk making the ten point, leaving a deuce shot here with a race lead and uh, having given up the cube, or you just go all to the six? Well, I see uh -huh. the an I see the answer. Yeah, but like you said, he's already sent the cube. Otherwise, it would have made a lot of sense to play safely, right? Yeah, and yeah, get yeah. the cube in later. Um, but then again. In holding games, playing safely often makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, one of my character flaws, I take too many chances. I think Frank will find the right play. Yeah. I guess the, the disadvantage of making the 10 is that, yeah, when it works, it's better, but it's not, you know, you're not home free. By yeah. any means. Well, look um, at him. He, yeah. It may work. He's a favorite yeah. to work. Yeah. 
Let's it's see. a nice play. It's a nice uh, play anyway. Now, what do you make the, the 11 or the 7? What do you think, Joe? Mm, you can also, yeah, okay. You, you can also push a checker. Yeah, you can do something like that. Well, I'm not yeah. a fan of that. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't. Well, it's not too bad. Oh, it's actually really good. How but about yeah, that? That's the, good actually, find, Victor. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a very good, good find. Good find, and quick it's find. It's a very ugly find, but it's a good find. Yeah. Okay, shifts the checker to get, get the cover from... Wow, these guys no, are fantastic. It doesn't. These guys are terrific. Oh, it does. You're right here. Yeah. 6-3, Superstar six, Shake by a Superstar yeah, yeah. player. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, hmm. awkward four. It really is. I think you just got to duplicate three. Oh, no, you can come out. I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's very good, very what good play. To do. That's why I'm out of the tournament. I missed these obvious moves. Yeah, yeah. 6-5, another good roll. So Joe, when do you start to think about redoubling here? I mean, he's not there's not that much gammon, but a gammon gets him to Crawford. But you're up fourteen to ten. Yeah, but so if you make the three you point, you gotta be very careful with the redouble. Yeah, it's a, probably a pretty thin margin between like like a really weak play on and just uh, oh, he's not gonna hit. No, they, so just, I mean, yeah, I think he's gonna hit. Yeah, when when he realizes he's he's not up in the race. Hmm. He is counting it, perhaps. I think he's counting the race. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight numbers for Frankie. Ooh. Not bad for a miss. Well, he's got to come out. I agree. Yeah. Pretty important roll, this one. 15 number, no, 17 numbers to hit. Victor has it. <clears throat> Double six is pretty good. The half his numbers are pretty good. Victor Ashkenazi rolled a 4-3. Probably and safety's prob one of them. Probably safety's the man on the eight point. It's the same number of shots, right? So you want to make sure your fours oh, and threes seven, play well. Four. I think if you go eight to five, and your four three, which is blocked, now makes the three points. So I like your play, Joe. You no. want to make your bad numbers play well. Staying seven to four is better, but this isn't plus plus yet. Well, they didn't plus the, the only okay. they didn't plus plus the second one. It's the second one's the, your play is probably better, Joe. Six four. Okay. Now what? No redouble. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. nothing <laughs> right. it's, it's just fine to. Even though he's up eighteen pips, you, you're just trying. It's but a, it's it's a score thing. And you have an anti joker double fours and uh, just you try and get lucky, win a gammon. He's seventy percent to win and nineteen percent gammon. Superstar shake. Right. But any time the reason your position is so strong is largely that you're winning some gammons. Then yeah. he's not going to send it. And it's, not a re are, it's still not a re -cube. No, but I mean, it's it feels like whenever it becomes good enough, it's going right. to become too you good. You just cross over it. Yeah. It's a very thin <laughs> yeah. uh, margin there. He won't double. Also, it's obviously because if Victor sends the cube to four, then if he wins a gammon, it's matters little because it's only it's going to be 18 10 anyway then so yeah, and the gammon's so, what like 20 percent or something look yeah, even here even here it's no redouble yeah yeah i figured as much he, if he releases a checker then we start to start to think about it yeah but then it's going to be too yeah good. then it crosses <laughs> over yeah it's a really interesting yeah conundrum yeah because if he fans now how can this go wrong for victor then yeah it must ask yeah run. I mean, even do yeah. e e now, even the double four still plays. Yeah, yeah, and as we can see, there it we is go. Too good Crossed now. over to the happy yeah. land, playing so. on, trying to get to Crawford to gain a spot in the finals of the world championship. Victor Drashkenazi has wanted this for a really, really long time. <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> Who hasn't exactly? 
Hey, um, I, I got 10th place last year. I was like, felt like going out to a pawn shop and buying gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> I think Victor's only flaw is that he shakes the dice a little bit too much and gets in time trouble. That's a pretty good flaw to have. Wow, great shot for Victor. He's in a pure play on with very little risk. Okay, 2 5. Yeah, good yeah. instincts for Frank. And now. Comes out to dodge the. Uh... And no bad numbers whatsoever for Victor. Ace, deuce, fall by deuce, five is it, but that's so minor. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, you have a free shake because there are no bad numbers. You can always double later. So if he rolled like. Uh, 5-2. Would he, would he cube then, or just still play on? 5-2? Any, 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 any number that four. just takes a checker off. No, I don't think so. What do you roll? Uh, this this is a bad Okay, roll. so now. Yeah, this is I, like I was, one of the very worst. Does he still play on? Uh, yeah, now he doesn't play yeah, on. But then, and now he doesn't play Yeah, well, it looks like it's still a take, though. It's minus 9 yeah, 5. That's a tough find, I'd wow. say. Wow. <laughs> that's a tough find, this take. <laughs> yeah. Uh it's a grotesque situation for uh, Mr. Frigo. If if it is one. Look at this, and a no-redouble is still a no-redouble. Yeah, yeah. Because it is a take, and you win many gamins. But, it's, but it is a take. That's something we know. I bet it's going to be passed if he sends it. But let's see. Frank's tenacious. I mean, he, he, he he's a really, really good player, but everybody's capable of making a mistake. Sure. I'm just saying this is a yeah, position yeah. where very many I'll, would have made a mistake. Yeah, I... I bet you uh, 190 people in this tournament. There it goes. All right, let's find out. And Mr. Frigo's got the fortitude. Yeah, and he passed immediately. Oh, snap yeah. pass. Snap pass. Yeah, but it's a, it's very, very difficult to know. the board to know that that is Out of 190 people you in this tournament, how many do you think would pass that queue? Yeah, the vast majority. And it's funny, the few people. But Joe, 70. Yeah. Joe, the funny thing is, is the few people who might pass this might say, I got enough edge over the next player that I'm just going <laughs> to. Yeah. yeah. What a tough tournament Actually, this is. There, there's two extremes that might take this. <laughs> right. The, 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 the really good the one, the bottom really 10 bad, players. The sub, three, the sub three PRs <laughs> and, and the 15 out and up PRs. Yeah, so the <laughs> bottom 10 players and the top 10 players. Yeah. So so Frank, close to a cube already now. If Victor oh can't goodness. deliver, it's yeah. going to be cube. But okay, he can't deliver. A fantastic deliver. shot yeah. for Victor. That is a delivery. What is three away, nine away? I'm really bad on my match equities. Like 82% right. or something? I don't even know. I don't know, but but it's... Uh, you can send the queue very early, that's for sure. Yeah. But in a non gamish um, position, he's going to hold off for a while. Right. You know, six away, nine away? I mean... Uh, can calculate away. it based on Neil, Neil's numbers, but... Okay. Well... Anyway, like you said, he has to wait longer in these uh, non gamish positions, but yeah. still not at all as long as at 0-0, zero, zero, for example. Right. I mean, he can cube earlier in those as well. Mm -hmm. Just because it's so hard for Victor to find a reasonable recube. I actually had an interesting positioning as Peter Thompson, Peter just Thompson, redoubled me from... He redoubled me from... Uh, Six away, three away. I mean, he was he was three away, I was six away. So I pass. I pass him at eleven percent. And surprisingly, uh I found that it was thirteen percent and I took it and got a do shot and missed it. Peter moves on. Okay. And how did you find that position was thirteen percent? Uh it was one of the uh two hundred thousand reference positions that I assembled <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> While I was sleeping. Come on, get a double. I lucky guess, Joe. That's all I said. Well, I guess it was. A, you showed it to me. I guess it was. Yeah, a take you were. Also, you and I so. were. The, uh, you hey, were I, and some other. But you said on, you figured it was thirteen percent. You just figured it was more than eleven percent. That's what so. You get. You get the the diamond star. I only get the gold star. Good for you, Joe. And some other unnamed super giants got it wrong. We won't say who. Okay. All right. Reasonable to run there, given 
the yeah. blots, I guess. Victor's uh, going to be not super... Well, are you, what are you supposed to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, the argument against it was that he is not up in the race. Right. I mean, yeah. and of course that there's some danger, but... All right, Victor, I'll play you $5 to play 6 to 5. You didn't do it. You didn't gain that $5 uh, free roll. Oh, look at this shake. Well, hit, it's in cover. Hit and cover. Yeah. Hit and cover. And he missed the cube, one of these. He missed one of these earlier. The cube's when he did, in the middle. But this one's automatic. Yeah, this is like just prepared to double. Yeah. So if w Victor comes in and cleans up, I guess he can dodge it. But he needs that. Yeah. If he fans, this all lights out. And if he comes in, like with a two, well, maybe the one. A lot of a lot of numbers to clean up. That's going to be double enough. Two. Okay. So enter that and. I'm happy to play eight to six. I don't want to get hit. What's the race here? Fourteen? Oh no, twenty. Twenty. Not an easy move. The last deuce, I believe. You want to play both of them? Yeah, I'm not that worried about getting attacked if I was Victor. So, ace but it's deuce. but it's not just about getting attacked. You want to come out with the guy and you know not collapse your your forward position as i see it right um this pretty good non uh, non escaping number for frank gets the builders lined up it's a victor with twos and fours and sixes and fives working five is good comes out yeah well, okay he plays that really interesting well, what was that uh the deal on that one i wonder if he saw the other move because the deuces are not going to be that easy to hit, and the sixes are duplicated. I think Frank just makes the two point. Should just make the two point here. I'm happy with that. You get a stronger board, making it more okay, uncomfortable. But he can also play 13 six, yeah. But he wants to make it more uncomfortable for Victor to try and contain uh, the back checker. So making that extra. Yeah, yeah. And it's nice to have the spare on the midpoint with nothing else to play in the outfield. It also gives you some protection but if you get hit inside later. True. Still leaves an ugly builder on the three point, but yeah. He had that, that was there anyway. That was just always going to be there. Sure, but it, now a point has been made in front of it. I mean, right. Okay, yeah. five two. Anyway. Now, Frank might be thinking about doubling. Oh, what do you think about doubling here? What's the race? Oh, he's up 17. He's got aces, nines, and 11s. He's trailing uh, nine away, three away. I, I, I think I should probably double. I send it here. Uh, and, and, such a I, mean, I don't know it's such a small advantage and so few gammons that it's not a super easy find but i agree it's probably technically enough plus all what, did he ever say whether it was a cube or not no we didn't, we didn't see, see it, it. and all things pretty, being i'm pretty sure based on the numbers it was a cube but yeah, all things being equal be. all things frank's a great player but all things being equal he is playing victor he's one of the yeah, top yeah. he's one of the top six or seven players in new york city so yeah, in so my you're, opinion. Look at that real guru. But but so you're saying Frank should take a little bit more risk to gamble since he's playing yeah. such a strong. Player. I mean, yeah. if I'm playing you or Mochi or uh, Peter P P P J T, I'm gonna take that <laughs> extra risk. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's uh, if I'm playing Joe, playing Joe Russell, I'm gonna take five extra shakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Joe, two-time World Monte Carlo finalist, great player. But but uh, uh, Steve, do you believe that Frank thinks that way? Uh to an extent, yeah. I'm gonna have yeah. some discussion. He did he did give a a point oh four something non milli forty like a forty one millipoint no double earlier. And I thought it was probably right. Right, but it's hard to know if it's he hard. did that knowing knowingly right. if you are if you see what I mean, yeah. right, right. Well, I'm, I'm saying what he may he may have not known whether it was an error or not to double, but he may have thought if I am making the error, it's very small, and I'm playing Victor, and I want to put yeah. pressure on him. Yeah, fair enough. All right, how unreasonable is it just to break the nine point here, or you just play thirteen three? It's reasonable. He's thinking about but it. I guess flexibility, non strip point. Yeah, and he's probably got to go. Yeah, it's pretty close, huh? So my suggested play is pretty close. Pretty Very interesting far. because Victor is probably have to give up, going to have to give up some point as well, right? So yeah, I mean, might... how do the plays compare if he has to give up a point? 
Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Apparently they are close as They're well. They're super with... close. Okay, let's see what happens here. Well, Victor rolls 6-1. He's going to get the cube. But that's about it. Okay, 2-1. Okay. Probably break the 6. Pretty close, but I just get rid of the gap. This is so, probably a cube now. I don't think so. I do. Well, let's find yeah, out. I, 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 I agree with Joe. I mean, at this score, you can cube earlier and if it's correct that he's up by 16 pips here yeah yeah okay good call guys anyway not a super big deal but he has market losers and he's gonna have them for a couple rolls yeah and some of the market losers are not only his good numbers but victor's bad numbers so something like five one six one you gain equity on that even so. four one Bust the board or lose yeah. a shot. You look at those. You so, know, he'll lose. He'll but he'll leave a shot on four one. But that's a, those are all really bad numbers. Yeah. Frank could roll a number, make make the ace point. Victor rolls an ace, leaves a shot, gets hit. You know, gammon occurs. It's not very often, but it's three point six eight percent. Okay, four one. So there's not that terrible. Scenario. So I actually play six to five to give myself a good five four. Right. Now it's I five agree. four leaves a shot. Okay. Well, not three, not, okay. not terrible. So similar looking positions. Going to be a double again, of course. Barely this time, though. Yeah, yeah he caught up in the race, and his position got a little bit more awkward. So fair enough. Um, double ace is not so bad. Ah, oh. probably five to four, six to five. Yeah, six to five looks good. <laughs> Got a bad five three if he doesn't do that. Good mm -hmm. call, Joe. Good catch, Joe. Yeah. Good play, Frank. I usually recognize those things very easily with three minutes left of my clock in the World Championship uh, <laughs> winner bracket finals. Right. Not Every time you've been there, you you've gotten it perfect, right? Yeah. One fifteen in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Day seven. Yeah, so now he's thinking about it, it seems. He has lost some ground in the race, but so it's easier for it. him to clear. Victor will take. Yeah. Down 11. Take. Okay, nice take, Victor. It's also, it's also kind of a nice cube to take for Victor, almost knowing he's not going to lose a G. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's pretty unlikely that's to get Gammon, so uh, he's... Trying to get to Crawford here. 3 1, all right. Just probably slide it to the ace. Okay, does he saves the guy on the outside? Doesn't want to slide. Pretty slot. good shake. Very good shake for the race. Yeah, did not leave a shot, even in the right. Victor wants to run from the back, I guess. Okay, he can't do that. I'm surprised Victor has so much time left on his clock. It's a lot. Oh, almost four minutes. Well, I think he just plays to the five and four. Is it two one or th three two one? one. Two, two one. one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. He doesn't want to block there, I guess, if mm. he gets a shot. There goes the Ooh. six point. There goes the neighborhood, as Joe says. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Victor. Some nice contact if he can run here well. Very good shot nice Victor. Roll. Wow. 11 pips, escapes a piece, keeps the Guardian back down on the 21 point. Yeah. And Frank can continue to waste pips if he can this clear. Is, this and, is a very close yeah. game now. 50-50 game, right? Oh, wow. superstar shake. Superstar shake by Frigo. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Well, Offal and McGrill are calling this match in heaven. I'd like to hear so, that commentary. Victor stays for the six shots. Yeah. Very reasonable. Looks right. Okay. Is, is he going to get the chance to stay again? Maybe he won't want to. No, he would stay again if he could. He would, yeah. Yeah, yeah All right. I agree. So 16-12. Let's see. Three away. Seven away. 
Ja. Should be like 24%. Uh, seems four, less, four, but four. I don't know. If I ever read a book, I might know what the metric queries are. May seem less, but it depends on if you're trailing or if you're ahead. <laughs> Look at that. Free. Okay. No. Joe, you lost this game once. Doubles, ace, deuce. Doubles. Peace, Louise. My worst loss ever in a backgammon tournament that I can remember was when I had to not roll a double ace to win to go to the finals of the tournament. And I rolled a double ace. My opponent missed the shot. And I rolled double ace again. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. That was that against Pat Gibson? It was. It was against Pat Gibson in the semifinals of the Las Vegas Open. And he won that one. He yeah, he won the, he won the tournament. Not, not only did I, that was the win, but after that I had to lose like two more games too. So it was like I had to go through that parlay, then lose two more games after that. All right, so what's Frank got? Oh, he just played 24-22. Pretty simple. No yeah, to. he rolls double aces here. He cannot make the seven because he believes he was shot. So, now, so he splits. Ooh. Or, yeah, he considers it. But, yeah, it's bad because oh, it leaves the shot. Oh, that's not so good. You're giving up a point, you're gaining a point, but you're leaving a, like half, almost half the numbers hit. Yeah. So, I mean, it's good that, these, that the seven point traps the 24 point um, guy, but, yeah, it's not enough. I'm very surprised. And he can step up. Well, I think I think he, guy, while yeah. it was the wrong play, I think what he's trying to do is get the strong, you know, front positions where he can get to doubles. And yeah, that makes sense. He's it's, trying to look for some gammonish. Uh, it's just a little hasty. going on. It was just a little uh, too risky. Yeah, I think it's a good point what you said, uh, Steve. That. You, you you give up your eight points, so it's not like you make a new point. You just yeah. get another point. You're getting a strawberry shake instead of a chocolate shake. It's still <laughs> yeah. a shake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very bad five. Yeah. Well, I mean, he has to play it, but he got the anchor. Yeah. He, yeah. He wanted the anchor. That. So far, it looks like the type of game that Victor wants to play. Yep. Not too much danger out there. Could he hit on the ace point, perhaps? Reasonable. Yeah. Wants to get him out of his hair. Good play. He doesn't have much hair. No? Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> I just did. <laughs> well, in that case, he wants to get him out of his hairs. <laughs> Oh, uh, what do we got? Okay, Ashkenazi makes the ace point. He's mm -hmm. at least got rid of that enduring liability. Ooh, this is interesting. Yeah. Wow, you really Given put it how ugly it is. What's the race here? And he's down. He's down. Frank's well, down I mean, sixteen. Seems like he wants to keep it back there, but it's so ugly. It's actually pretty yeah. close. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I probably would have gone to the deuce point. Yeah. I mean, conceptually, you don't want to run, but it's was just so bad of a non-running play okay i think victor should just bring two down from the midpoint just start to play pieces behind the anchor yeah i think making yeah good he's he right. found it it's the right idea just hope to get lucky and roll one more double four double six yeah sounds sounds intelligent <laughs> because otherwise he would just be looking to clear his midpoint soon. isn't this interesting wow another ugly non-running I mean, build down 16 pips after the play but he doesn't really have much option here this isn't so bad he's not going to get hit yeah he uh, apparently he can and run he can, without can... going with both guys he could go with one guy but yeah hmm. difficult find okay. but good roll for victor get 11 pips makes a new point yeah frank would like to roll deuce and make an extra blocking point he does yeah, that's important, actually. Yeah, extra number you can't double, can't roll per through. So Frank, not that easy for Victor to clear the point. Okay, a little. 
If Victor rolls like a 6 4, should he pay now? Probably not. With this big a race lead? Here, I would just slot the ace. I would not break that point. Could be right, but I wouldn't do it. Was that the right play? Did you, anybody see it? No, no, no. I'm... Okay. Frank's got a decent amount of timing here. Okay, easy. 11 and 4. Got that fourth point in his home board. If Victor rolls double fours, so he'll be the best field goal kicker for the New York Jets in their history. He didn't get five. it. Hmm. Victor, Six to one, yeah. Victor, yeah. a big New York Jets fan. <laughs> Six two. I probably select a three point. Yeah, I would too. Well, you're not really trying. You're down that far in the race. You're not trying to get, get off the uh, thirteen point. But perhaps he feels that the three-point block could be a liability if he has to hit right, immediately. But he won't because uh, Victor has one piece of timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty small. Ooh, you could make the four-point. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. He's saving it. Saving for one shake for a rainy day. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. Free go. Worked out well. So now if Victor rolls 6-5, Frank actually. might double him. Yeah, he'll double him if he rolls 6-5. Anything sure. else? Anything else bad? Yeah, Frank would have about 24 number, 25 numbers. Yeah, 25 numbers. Not Look at that. Rolls the four, best four. field goal kicker in New York Jets history. It's too Mr. Good, Ashkenazi. It's too, good now. it's too good now. It's too good for him. It's too bad for Frank. Yeah. And I think it's too good. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> obviously it's too good. 45 fifths. Yeah. 50, was it? All right, Victor's going to be very happy. I would get into two away now. Most of his uh, games are going to be holding games. They're trying to play for an undoubled gammon. He can get a blitz going. He, he gave up his one chance in a thousand to win a game. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, that's fair. All right, Frank. Frank will be shipping early in the advantage here. Yeah. It and hasn't split. been able to find those gammon his position. He's, no. he's been a little bit unlucky there. Just some holding games since he became a trailer. Enter, split, and make the five. Yeah. And so he's going to probably, Victor doesn't roll something productive, he's going to get the cube. He has a lot of productive numbers. Aces, sixes, and deuces. Anything that makes an inside point. But if... Let's see. 4-4. Four, four. Saves the cube for sure. And there you go. This is one of the game plans I thought Victor could go for. The undoubled gammon. From two away. That's a great ah, shot by superstar Frank. Superstar shake by Frank. Desperation joker. Wouldn't call it a joker. but uh, I don't have time to think about the right word. and just say what comes out of my head. Okay, three six. Okay, no double. And he stops to consider it. Yeah, with the A, I don't think he's outboarded and down in the race. I don't think he's going to double with. Uh, there we go. Well, he's probably going to double the next shake. Another joker yeah. by Frank. Don't you I would agree, say Joe? almost any anything that uh, Victor rolls, Frank will double if he doesn't hit. No, even if he hits. Really? Yeah. One, one six is a cube? Oh, this is a cube. Yeah. Now it's an easy cube, and Victor probably is going to drop. Look at this. Snap double. Didn't even think about it. Victor, how much time does he have on his clock? Like three minutes, two and a half minutes? I think it's something like that, yeah. We're going to find out in two yeah, seconds. Exactly. So two and a half minutes. Yeah. Victor should take okay. 30 seconds. Very nice double by Frank and a, and a take. You think it's a take? I see. I see. The, I see. The, the, it's the on the screen. <laughs> But but I mean it's a and Victor dropped it. Okay, not an easy decision. Well, good call, not Joe. Not an easy decision. Good call, Joe, on yeah. the XG, and good call, Steve, <laughs> on the decision. Okay, these could these guys take any breaks this match? Yeah, they've taken a couple short breaks. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, ooh, exciting score: two away, six away. Frank could double, get a back game, win the whole thing.
How many three pointers did uh, Kareem have as a career, Joe? I don't know. It's probably going to be very few, but I'm going to guess uh, four or five. One. Okay. And if Frank can hit that three pointer in this game right here, he'll win the match and be in the finals of the world championship. Has to be a double one. Okay, what do we got? Four six. Five two, not terrible. Let's make the eleven. We've just got a little counterattack going here. But again, looking like a pretty comfortable game for Victor. So far? Not too... What do you roll? 6-1. Too many gammons. Yeah. Inconvenient truth here. Can't move that checker on the 15. No. Can make the 7, or he can hit loose and what with the 6 slot? Oh, he's doing this. Okay. Okay. Frank probably has a cube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, 18 and 5 looked natural, but at the score, it looks very, very scary. I think it was, was a difficult play to make. 1-5 just come out? I don't like the double hit. I would, I would hit on the ace. Hitting is fine. He All has right. a blood in his inner board. Fair enough. Okay, you guys made the call. But you were right, Steve. Coming yeah. out was slightly like, better. Less than point oh two. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. So if uh, Victor doesn't hit or make an anchor or come in with two checkers, he's going to get the cube. He stays out with one and doesn't anchor. But okay, he came so in with both. I don't. Th I think Frank's gonna hit, wait here with a checker on the ace point. I think it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Four three hit and cover. Yeah, saw it right away. I would hit and cover. Yeah, and you know why? Because Victor's got a blunt in his board. I just learned that. Like true, so but it also has an anchor. Here, no, hit, hit, hit and cover was clearly right. Yeah, good call, Joe. I I thought so too. All right, Victor needs a deuce here for that advanced anchor. 6-5, should be getting the cube, man, cube, maybe? I mean, four away, two away, Frank for sure could double. I don't know about this score, four away, two away, six away. Probably a double, it's minus 770. There you go, he doubles. It's minus more than that because he didn't make that play. Right, that's correct. Yeah. I don't think Victor likes this game so much. He might take it, though. I don't think he yeah. likes it. Uh, he's taking. It looks hard to pass. Yeah, you yeah, got you, the anchor. I, I, I can't imagine. <laughs> Frank's got a blot on his ace point. This being a pass. No. Can, um, you, can you imagine? No, it isn't. I've already seen that it's not a pass, but I mean, it also looks hard to pass. Right. I think he will take it because it's against the one point board. Oh, he passed. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Anything exciting here. Frank's down up to uh, 25%. I have a way two away. Okay. Frank's rolling with a little bit of confidence here. Made a little bit of a comeback. Yeah. I think you're supposed to split there. Mm. No. That's this is the right play even wow. at zero zero. Look at this. Okay. Yeah. Again, Victor's gonna be playing for that undouble gammon. Pretty comfortable position. Advanced anchor. Outside prime. Okay. okay. For sure. Just 4-1, great shot for Victor. Uh, is this going to be the game? This could be the game. Like 20-25% 20, 20, of the time. Oh. <laughs> I don't think Victor's doubling anytime soon. Good call. Oh, that's, that's, that's wise. Wise words. All right, let's see. Is he going to make the outside prime? Attack inside? What do you roll? Ace, ace. Ooh. Excellent shot. Five point prime. And even if he gets hit, it's not that big a deal. He actually didn't want to see the deuce more than the six. Yeah, a good shot. Actually, maybe he could be doubling Joe uh, in a yeah. while. <laughs> nah, yeah, not with three checkers back. No, just... no, but I mean, let's say he steps up with that backmost uh, checker. Yeah. All right, this is interesting. Got a six prime there. Advanced anchor. Yeah, so he could step up with the back guy now, for example. 
and he could escape with this anchor. You know, another play that's just pretty reasonable would have been just to make the four point play to the twelve point. You that's the kind of play that I would gonna... make, and it would be wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> Remember no, the two one I had against. Uh... Yeah. Well, the, the the thing about that play is, you know, you really if you go for any counter counter prime, you'd much rather have the four point than the three point. Yeah. True. I think it's, but I guess Frank, because Victor is. Uh, and and playing thirteen twelve gives you chances to make the uh, seven nine or ten point. Yeah, I think that was actually the play. Also twenty four to twenty two. What was not as important when when gammons are not his biggest and concern. And you're behind a six. Uh, yeah, but good show. Oh, look at this. Four three. Wow, that's an unlucky roll. I didn't even see it. Now he's glad he's on the 22 point. So, yeah. I don't know. You could slot the four point here, Frank. I would slot the four. You did not keep more builders for those other three points yeah. as well. Mm. It, and uh, at the expense of a four number shot. Well, yeah. And basically, he needs to contain uh, Victor. And right. that's going to be really hard with that sort of vision. But, yeah. And again, he wants to block him as well. All right. How about slotting the four now? Yeah. Good idea. What is that? Oh, that's, that's not illegal. illegal. Play. illegal. So he finds it. It's nice to make illegal <laughs> plays with a minute and 20 seconds. He would have made the, the four point if he'd made the right play the I, first time. Good observation. That's absolutely <laughs> true. Okay. And he wouldn't have gotten a hit. And he wouldn't have been hit. Oh, right. big swing. Now victory. And what would have happened next? Oh, I don't know. No. So now it's. Just make the four point. This yeah, must, that's that's reasonable. So I because guess it's too good, right? Of course. He can't really double five in three. One. All right. I mean, could you get fancy and hit loose here, or just run? No, just run. I mean, he can probably. There you go. <laughs> XG could. Okay. XG and Steve. Yeah. That's that's the new uh, bot coming out. Yeah. Wasn't sharp earlier when it counted. I would have played uh, eight to six. Same yeah. number of shots. Clear is easier. All right, slotting. Yeah. And play to the nine, giving yourself good fours and sixes. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Probably not a gammon. Probably like what seventeen percent or something. Okay. Pretty ugly now. They're both ugly. Look at this. I'm talking about ugly. ugliness. It's ugly. Agreed. Okay, just break the six. I guess. You break the five. Either one. All right. It's a good roll under the circumstances. Yeah. Frank. I mean, very, very small winning chances. Very for good for still. Frank. You slaughter, just continue. I'll probably right. slot. I don't think you get game too often. Oh, yeah. Really? No. Isn't it pretty close? Or no. I mean, I don't know. I didn't see any numbers <laughs> lately, but I wouldn't. No, me so. neither. <laughs> okay, now it's not at least. Okay, he gets to slot a six point. It's a potential of making it in a five point board. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh but he's got a. Doesn't he have a free shake here? Yeah, he does. Yeah. He has no bad numbers. Even if you roll double threes. All right, so that's a little bit of... You know, Maybe not against double sixes if you roll 2-1. I don't know. I, I didn't see what the race differential yeah. was. Okay, so 18-14. One away, five away, Crawford. Break. Yeah. Thank you for watching, everyone. We really appreciate all the comments, and we appreciate everyone uh, hitting the like button. Um, and during the break, you smash the like button. Smash it. You have all the time in the world now. Don't tell him. Uh, 2 p.m. tomorrow will be on. Round of eight playoff matches. Going to be Morton Hall and Nakatsuka Circus Pan and Paul Sawyer and. Bill Seth.
Far away. I'll let you say this. <laughs> right. Maybe you. Maybe you go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I think it's easiest. Okay. At uh, two p.m. tomorrow, we'll resume streaming. It'll be two round of eight matches and the uh, second chance playoff. One of those will be Morton Home against. Uh, Kenjo Nakasuka from Japan, and the other one will be Alexis Vincent from France versus Martha Jelseth from Norway. So those will be the two uh, two matches. So join us at uh, 2 p.m., 1400, uh, tomorrow afternoon. And thank everyone for watching tonight, and I'd like to issue a special thanks to all of the assistants we've had today, Justin uh, Noel, a couple of matches over there. Mark Dixon, who set in uh, in the early afternoon when uh, Phil first fell victim to his uh, stomach disorders. And then um, tonight, Thomas Tenlin is set in for the duration. Joe took over early on for when Phil again fell ill. Steve set in late, but... I'll tell you, <laughs> I do a lot of commentary. I know how long and grueling these matches are, not only for the players, but for the commentators. And uh, I'd like to really express our appreciation for y'all uh, sitting I, in and taking care of that tonight. I strained a vocal cord last time when I did commentary with you. Really? Vegas, <laughs> and I had to like go on uh, speak rest for three weeks. <laughs> really? Okay, so anyway, thank you very much, guys, and hopefully we'll have a great end of this match. They're saying on the stream, Thomas, that you look cold. Are you cold? He, oh, I, he, you know, he, he, com he comes from a desert country. Is you it know, my nipples? <laughs> it's a family show. Alex Shagan wants to know when your book signing is. When my book signing is, yeah, yeah. yeah I think uh, I, the book probably has to exist first. Okay. And um, that's taking some time. So I mean, I hope it's going to be. Well, next he wants to year. know if he can get the first signed book. The first signed book, yeah. Okay. Okay, probably Alex, can. you've got. You probably it. can. Hi, Alex. Thanks for watching. Dimitri's here. Ian Terry. Mark Emmerich. All my friends. Both of them. Oh. Oh, I just did something here. Did I do? That's it. They have to start the match over now. You messed it up. I. Let's see if I can find out. All right, one away, five away, 16.5%, I guess. Frank's got to win three games or a gammon on the next game. Wow, 20 point. Oh, really? Oh, he doesn't need to. Well, he doesn't need to, yeah, worry forgot, about yeah. looking at G. It was um, close. Yeah. Um, All right, good shot for Frank. So this game is essentially like DMP. Right? Yeah, DMP. You with only care the, about winning. DMP with a paranoia about getting back in. Yeah. <laughs> that hasn't kicked in quite yet. No, it was um, Kimon P. I can't pronounce his last name, but he backgammoned me at 108 3 away Crawford. And I stayed for the classic, and I wasn't supposed to. He rolled a double. Kara, stop it. Papa Christopoulos. Thank you, Bill. That was the first year of two consecutive years that he won the New York Metro. All right, Victor's in a pretty good shape here. Middle anchor and equal board. Probably choose thirteen ten. Mm -hmm. Six one is duplicated. You don't want to step into the five three. 
Okay. Now I got the combat chair. Okay. Okay, thanks. 6-2. Ooh, not bad. Well. Carter's here fresh out of the hospital. This Hi, is Carter. Mark Dixon and Gigi Goyet. Hi, Gigi. Eric Peterson. Eric? It's like romper room. It's like, I see you, and I see you, and I see you. I used to watch that 60 years ago. Oh, 6-1. Wow. Super shake. Victor with the Hi, five Victor. prime. As to fade the ace shot. Great Two shot six. by Frank. He's out. Yeah. With one guy. No, well, that's that's a big improvement. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 5-1. Average minus. Doesn't leave a shot, but it doesn't hit or make a point. Three yeah. two. Probably thirteen eight. Yep, that's what I would do. Good play. Doesn't have that great timing, Victor, after all. Could get a little bit awkward. Yeah. He first really needs make... to roll the three point with one of those three builders. Four points. I mean, this point's not so bad. Nope. But it's. Shot. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Three, two. Well, I guess so. No, just continue. Yeah. All right. Victor's in good shape here, but he needs to perform. It also works on those points. Three, two. All right. It's the role of the match coming up for Frank Frigo. How does he play the two? He's got to come in and give so himself yeah. good five. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, that looks right. Yeah, and the games Remember. don't really matter that much. Huge role for Frank Frigo to keep himself in the match with a shot at the world championship. And no, and Victor is on roll to close to make a six prime. Don't forget, he's only three ma Even if he loses, he's only three matches away from being back in the world championship. Hmm. Big, big swing. Big swing. All right. Excellent roll for Victor. With the six prime needing sixes and fours to get out, escape, and presumably be the finalist in the world championship. For the first time in his illustrious career. And if he comes out what do you roll? with Two both one? guys, he probably shouldn't hit the guy in the outfield, right? Oh, yeah. Good if point. he's out yeah. with both of them. Just wants to roll the prime forward. Look at this, Frank. Okay. Now bring, he should, of course. Bring it down. Give yourself a chance to make the six prime. You don't care if you get hit. You might want to get hit if the expector's going to escape. I don't think you want to get hit. Definitely don't want to get hit on this roll anywhere. No. All right. <laughs> I, I know you want your opponent to roll. I don't have. Hit any button on that remote, please. Okay. There's a button that says kill Steve. Don't hit that one. Three, two. What a dog. Dog shake. I'll be eight to three. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How much time has he got left? Oh, it's under a minute, 50 seconds. It looks very scary. That clock ticking down there. Make the right play. Frank don't told me earlier, he said he considers his clock at 40 seconds to be zero. So once he gets to 40 oh. seconds, he will play as if the clock is on zero. Just to Ooh, make interesting. absolutely sure he doesn't lose right. the time. Okay. Interesting. But in this situation, I might deviate from that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Joe, have you ever lost on time twice in one match? <laughs> not, th not that I can recall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this play. Yeah, he wants to pick up that Maximum call. Very creative play. The problem is... Gam oh, it's 18. It's Crawford game. That's, a, uh, that's not a bad play. Look at this. Oh, oh now Victor's going to play 6-1 to one and break his prime. In no, he didn't do it. I guess that's the wrong idea. So, counter prime possibilities. And there it is. Yeah, and now we have a game. We got yeah, a yeah. real live game here. Victor should be still a favorite. Frank got rewarded for his big play. Wow. Big play, Frank. That was a gutsy play. Oh, superstar Great shape shot by, by Victor. Victor. It's that ace. It is a joker. Frank's Any ace gonna be joker. happy to hit loose here. Especially ace deuce. When do you roll five three? No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he has to hit on the deuce. Yep. You got to yeah, hit. Hope he comes in on the twenty four. Hope he comes in on the twenty four. It's up. Oh, now he's down to zero on his clock, Joe. <clears throat> wow. Well, yeah. why, did, why didn't he hit? I I don't know. Yeah, Maybe he wants him to roll a five four or something. Right. Double three. I guess he's thinking is he wants him to move. But, Victor, yeah. I think a slight mistake. He should have played eight to six. 
Eight I mean, nine to six on the last one. Huh. Yep. Let's have... Okay. Okay. So Victor, a six away from launching himself into the finals of the world championship. Can he do it? Five four. Well, he's got to leave a shot here. Roll. All right. Big shake for Frank. They can roll a six. Force a second game probably. Did not. Another shot for Victor. Huge rolls. Every roll is huge. Double six doesn't even leave a shot. I'd like to see them both time out. I guess it can't happen. Oh, massive. Hit loose. Okay. Oh, yeah, 2-6 from the bar, but it didn't happen. It looks like we're going to overtime, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, how about making the 9 and then just not leaving that point slotted? I mean, making the He doesn't point. need gammon, so. Yeah, but he might get a backgammon. That's pretty ambitious, right? I, I've gone for it, and I've made it. I've made it at least once out of 100 times. Maybe once out of 500. Yeah. Whatever, it's, it's worth a shot. Okay. Yeah. One second every shake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in the DMP, it's not good. Two time world champion Masasuki Mochizuki making jokes in the background. <laughs> the man, the man in the shadows. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Do the wave. <laughs> Backgammon Masterclass available at your bookstore. Go buy it. Get an autograph copy. Autograph copy in any bookstore. Any bookstore. Okay. The first one. All right, All so right. game for Frank. Wow. Super exciting. 1815. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. He knows. <laughs> no, he told me. All right. Too many checkers left. We're going to another game. Yep. 18 15. Now post Crawford. Yep. Free drop, right? Free drop. Oh, they, he's on a break. It's another break. He's going to check. Oh, okay, okay. Just stretching for a moment. He's just checking his phone if it was a free drop. Or <laughs> oh, it's not. It's not him that has to take that into account, right? It's Victor's problem. <laughs> it's pretty rare, but if he actually uh, opens with three one and Victor rolls a five one, is he supposed to play for the gammon for a shake? Sure. So if Frank opens with a 3-1 and Victor responds with a 5-1 or 4-1, is he supposed to play for a gammon and just not even double? I think no, not at this score. Okay, but 18, just two away, 18, one 17. away? Yeah. Okay, good to know. All right, double take. Frank is a gammon away from finding a spot in the world championship for the second time. Great shot. In 29 years, 29 years ago he won this tournament, yeah. 1994. Yeah. Okay. He just made it before Should the, the delay stuff. Okay. Very exciting game coming up here. Okay. Not terrible. Not that yeah. good. So he wanted to split, couldn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, two down. Take your chances. Victor needs to hit or 
Roll boxes or fours. You may be in some trouble right, of getting so gammon. Just make a nice point, this board. Yeah. Pretty close. Game, right? Right? Yeah. Three one. All right. A lot of volatility on this next shake here. Frank with the three one. Mm. Surpassing him in board strength. The seven or the four though. Yeah. Seven. Mm. Or three. That's well, one two of the down. numbers. I think you just bring two down. Why would you, why would you do that? I don't understand. That. Maybe not to just leave the outfield to the opponent. I guess. Not. Okay. <clears throat> oh my oh, goodness! What a shot! What a incredible! Shot. Incredible! And Very good only, play. He only shook the dice for like five seconds. <laughs> All right, that's got to be a little frustrating for Frank here. It's game still, and chance. Still far from over here. Yeah, so play two off the three, ten two, point. Three, two. Oh, I see. So can you give yourself a good six? Good play. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you have to. All right. <laughs> Almost half of Victor's numbers make the four point and a five prime. Let's see if he can roll it. Does he have any bad numbers? Six five's not so good. Six so five. Who said that? Who called that number? Who called that number? Oh my goodness. Unsportsman like pulling numbers. Really? I think you got a slot slot. What? No. I you just got a slot and slot. Wow, the huge roll, the hugest roll the entire tournament so far. Aces and threes for Frank. He hits with an ace, but he's double slotted in his board. Another massive shake coming up for Victor. Any ace or deuce, and he's looking great. If he misses, he can be gamming for the match. He dances here. It's like this really. This is the roll threatening. of the tournament right here. He stayed out. So Frank with aces, deuces, threes, and fours, he rolls a three six. Ooh. Well, maybe. No, maybe so. Doing it come out. It's not. No. No, I, 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 th I, I don't think so. I like this. Oh, okay. Good What's play. What's the best play? Oh, Victor stayed out again. And it looks like Frank's probably a favorite here in the match. 6-5, Six, Six, five, and it covers. Wow, Victor, <laughs> who was massively ahead in this match, is looking to possibly go to the second chance bracket. Frank needs a four to close out with a presumptive wow. gamma, and he wow. rolled a four. Escapes. Wow. <laughs> okay, just make sure you don't leave yourself bad doubles. Don't leave yourself a bad double four, double five. Okay. Six, 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 Just, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, he's he's probably gonna win. Yeah, that was that was. That's what I said. I would. I think you just bring it in, Frank. Just bring it. I think Frank's supposed. To, no, now double twos cracks. Why'd you do that? Nobody would ever roll double two. No, that's fine. He rolls double fours again. He leaves Victor a shot. Oh, can you really do that? You shut up, Roy. <laughs> you were thinking it. And I said it. Oh. Wow. Oh my. So let's see. 6-2. It's a great, great shot. Day. Great shot. Takes a checker off. Evens the distribution. Victor needs boxes. Like he got earlier. That was amazing. Victor got boxes. What's going on here? You're such a jerk. Okay. Yeah. What's what's going on? With the along with that, along with along with that, Tara, and along with every chip in front of him, that's a line from Rounders. Wow, unbelievable. Okay. Uh, yeah, clear. Good play. Okay. No shots. Will he leave a shot? Six numbers leave a shot. He no did shot. not roll it, and you can play safe here. Joe Russell taught me this play like a week ago. Okay. No shots. Okay, That's so no sa shots. he saves a shake. Victor needs massive doubles here. Oh, it's seven to six, obviously. No shots. You're beyond that, Rory. We're past the no shots part. <laughs> Still no shots, though. <laughs> yes, no shots. I was so 11 crossovers, nine crossovers, two, three, four. Dude, so it looks like, higher level now, like Victor needs a couple of big doubles here. I don't think one double is going to do it. Aww. All right, going to the 11 point. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So Victor needs boxes. Victor needs boxes and some help. If he doesn't roll boxes. Oh, and you got to bring it in. That goes to the four point. 
So Victor needs boxes and help to get on it's over. Frank, here you go. Finalist the world championship for the second time in 20 years. Great match, everyone. Very tough. Very, very tough loss for Victor. That was that was such such a turnaround on that last game. It was very, very, very tough. Congratulations to Frank Frigo. Congratulations to Victor on yeah, they another both extremely match. well played match. Oh, Frank's about to time out. He didn't take that last checker off. Uh, it's a hundred percent position. <laughs> What an exciting finish. Incredible. The 6 5 Victor rolled, and then Frank rolled 3 6 and closed him out. I mean, Hashim says San Diego proud. Congratulations. Go, Frank. Dimitri, congrats, Frank. David San Saunders, great match. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Neil Kazaroff says bravo, Frank. Mark Dixon says excellent commentating by Steve. That's <laughs> so all I got left. They won't let me play in the children's tournament tomorrow. Hassan says both bad 18. players both made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Who said that? Who said that? It's what funny. a legend. Somebody named Hassan. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Hassan is better. So, I mean, of course, you understand. Yeah. That's his own feeling. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Make sure to smash the like button. Thanks, Thomas Tenland to Steve Sachs for commentary expert friends commentary of mine, friends of mine and uh thanks everybody we'll see you tomorrow and smash